Welcome to No Stress Podcast with me. Dave Williams is me. Hello, mate. How are you doing? All oh, good, you? Yes, good. You're fresh off the tr- a trip from Whitstable. Yeah, back from Whitstable yesterday, mate. How yeah. was it? What yeah, did you get lovely, mate. Cockles and winkles and all that. Yeah, very nice, mate. You getting your winkle out? Is that what you're doing? Winkles are always out, son. Yeah, no, it out. was it was good. No, lovely time. It's lovely down there, mate. It's uh, not Just, far from here, is it? And no, it's good. Beautiful little coastline. I had a little walk down to Herne Bay. Very nice. And uh, walk back again, yeah. A few uh, pints? Yeah, a few pints, Mike. A few, a, few, a few glasses of Kentish wine. Oh, very nice. From the local vine. Yes. <laughs> from the local vine, yes. vineyard. Yes. So the beer down there, what is the beer down there? They've got loads of beer. Yeah, well, all the pubs and all the hotels, they're all uh, run by Shepherd Neem. Right, yeah. So they've so. Got, I think, is it Whitstable Bay? And like, you know, like, like they yeah. do with the Lee beers. Lee yeah, yeah. yeah, they do like dark ones and blonde ones. And so you're back from there, what time did you get back? Drove back this morning. Yeah, back this morning, mate. It's only an hour to go. It? It's literally, you go over the old uh, Dartford Bridge, hang a left, go down, it's, it's just before Canterbury, so it's in between Blue Water and Canterbury. All right. Oh, yeah, very so easy directions. Do a, do a bit of shopping down there. Mate, if you're standing on the old Broadway and you're looking across past the old uh, chimney stacks and cranes and you've got the long bit that goes around, uh, I think it's uh, the Isle of Grain and Sheerness, it's just hidden around the other side of there. Very nice. I saw, a, days. I, I saw a little nature board yesterday that was talking to me about you know all the different feeding uh, Migrating birds and yeah. uh, the the rare water voles down there, and and it said on a, you know on a lovely day you can actually see Southend on the other side. You can, and why wouldn't you want to see it? Because it's bloody beautiful. It is beautiful. It's fucking gorgeous. Paradise. It is. It's actually oh, that Jamie Oliver program on the end of the pier. They got Lindsay Lowen down here, and she said that that looks like LA. Yeah. And I thought you're definitely on crack club. Yeah, I think you are. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. But Leon C voted the happiest or the best place to live in the UK. Uh, happiest, probably because most of the people there think it's snowing all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, the most excitable. The most excitable the place. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that's to do with uh, just normal day living. I think that's uh, chemically enhanced happiness. Well, it could be. It could be. But yeah. no, what? It, that's still happiness. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a fly joining us. We'll get that. Like that. That's like when Barack Obama sort of grabbed that thing. Do you remember? Did you see that? Barack no. Obama's having an interview. There's a little fly going like that. Mid-interview, it goes like that. Really? President of the United States can catch flies. He'd obviously been watching the Karate Kid. That's it, probably. Wha- wax on, wax off. They should never have got rid of him just because of that. What, the Karate Kid? No. <laughs> Barack Obama. Barack Obama, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, apparently he's got a great bonsai collection. Apparently. Yeah. And he's got a very intelligent wife. To be fair, mate, I'm not a big fan. Who's the big fella? James Corden? Yes. Not a big fan. <laughs> Obviously, a lot of people like him, but um, I've got to say, the old carpool karaoke, yeah, and the one he did with Obama's missus, unbelievable. She was quality, mate. Yeah, she's great. She's like the most powerful woman in the world, Mm -hmm. and she's in there, like you know, shaking her thing and singing songs and that, mate. Different, different gravy, mate. Different, massive respect to her. Different type of person. Just normal. I know, which is not the case now. No. Yeah, but we, you know, Donald Trump. I saw him call the CEO of Apple Tim Apple the other day. That's not his name. His name's Tim Owens. Yeah, well. There you go. He thought, he, I think he just thinks that everyone names their company after their second name. Yeah, but you're talking about a bloke who, uh, you know, got the leader of North Korea mixed up with Elton John. That's true. And you know what? That, to be fair to him, it's an easy mistake to make. Oh, it is, mate. Yeah. It and is. Every, we could all do that. We could all map that up. No, we could do, mate. It's, it is an easy mistake to make, especially when you've got all that fake tan clogging your eyeballs, mate. I know. And the wig. Oh, the wig, mate. The is lovely... it a wig, though? It's like, um... it's like a. It's like sort of like a, a rusty candy floss, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And they should always make candy floss with rust in it. They should, mate, yeah. Uh, that's ideal. Is, that, ju- is that, that iron? Is that iron intake? Uh, no, that's, isn't that the one you have an injection for? Yeah, I think so. Tetanus. Yeah, yeah tetanus, that's it, yeah. What happens if you get tetanus? God knows. You just get yeah. hair like that. You I do, or, or you, yeah. But it, it, yeah, you do, you get hair like that. I mean, there's, there's, no other, there's no other explanation for it, is there? Not really. Apart right. from, you know... He likes that colour of wig. I guess that's an explanation. Well, his missus must like him, hasn't she? Well, probably. Well, she's probably made to. You're going to say you've never heard her like say she don't, do you? <laughs> no, exactly. And fair play to her. Being with someone like that for money is, you know, probably, fair play. Probably helps she can't speak English. Yeah, that probably does help. Yeah. She thinks she's just sort of... I think she probably just thinks she's part of a film set or something. Yeah, I think so. It's like the old Truman Show, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I, do you know what? I haven't seen that, but I know exactly what have it is. Have you not seen it? Three people have mentioned the Truman, oh, it's Truman Show. it's a great film, mate. Great film. Yeah, I've got to see it. I yeah, know I would good. love it. That's, yeah. that's all what I'm all about. Get it. I will. I definitely will. It's actually in a cupboard in there, but I won't get it now. Cause... Oh, you've actually got it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you not seen it? Ella's got it. I haven't got round to it. No excuse. Embarrassing. Very fucking much. embarrassing. Very embarrassing. I haven't oh. even seen Forrest Gump. Have you not? No, fucking embarrassing. Very embarrassing. What and else? You, and you sort of are Forrest Gump, but of the cycling world. I well, suppose. you know, yeah. Well, yeah, started with a skinhead, ended up with a beard and long hair. Well, exactly. Invented the acid rave, and <laughs> yeah. uh, shit happens. 
<laughs> well, yeah, it's a good thing to get up to. <laughs> Or a shin, and, just stick. and he just it just kills it like that. Do you know what I mean? It's like technically unbelievable. Just born with that, and that was you know a Webby free transfer from Exeter. My dad ran on the pitch when he scored at Berry. So yeah, so did one of my yeah, mates. Yeah. One of my mates, and he said he grabbed him and my, cuddled him. Yeah, my dad, my dad grabbed him and cuddled him. And, What's your and, dad's name? Uh, Chris Williams. It's not Herman. They've gone on over Herman. No, he's not. Well, he might live his double yeah, life. Yeah, I don't know. Do, yeah. Don't know what people get up to. But <laughs> apparently, he grabbed him, and he and Benjamin went. Calm down, we're not promoted yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but that's cool though, isn't it? Mate, that's brilliant. That doesn't yeah. happen anymore. That does is it? cool, mate. That's really cool. I've lost my water here. Yeah. I want it to be a bit more water. I'll tear off feel old. The season before that, I went to Peterborough to see us win in the last game of the season. Fucking hell. And we won 2 1 to get up to the third division. And then obviously the Benjamin season was the next one. Yeah. And David Crown got both goals. And I was sat there. I had a, I had a pair of shorts on, a rubber mm. ring around my waist, a glittery <laughs> wig, and a, and a Vikings helmet. <laughs> And when I looked at that, we had about 1,500 there that day, which seemed like loads. Yeah, and right. that was like 1989. And I think, oh my God, that was fucking okay. 30 years I wasn't even years born. Ago. Mate, just, to just before you were born. Yeah, nine, yeah, yeah, the year before you were born. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. It's mad when you Crazy. do things like that. But then when you see that Charlie Kelman that scored that goal the other day, born yeah. in the year 2002. Mate, it's so scary, isn't it? It's so scary. <laughs> unbelievable. It's so scary. Peterborough. Yeah, hopefully we have 1,500. I'm going tomorrow. Oh, you get, you, have you got taken advantage of the yeah, free, free yeah. Uncle Ron's free yeah, coach Yeah, you've got, you got to take, take Uncle Ron's sweets when yeah. you can. Yeah, he don't give many out, does he? No, he doesn't. No. He loves a statement. That's, oh, he's mate. so good at statements. Mate, he loves a statement. You should get writing them for him. No, thanks. No, because you couldn't. It's like, it's, it's like you'd have to it'd be like... Uh, I'd have to be like um, Goebbels, wouldn't I? It's like, I'd, have to, I'd have to be writing like propaganda, wouldn't I? <laughs> It'd be like propaganda. I, think I couldn't be doing that, mate. I'd be the South End United Goebbels. Go- yes. <laughs> writing a load of Bernie old Goebbels. Goebbels friends. Yes, Bernie Goebbels. It's got a ring to it, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yes. I can feel a podcast name yes. coming on. Yes, yes. Yeah, so this podcast is called the No Stress Podcast. Okay. And it's about trying to live a positive life, a low stress life as much as you possibly can and just trying to deal with things in a balanced way, which isn't always possible. So in it, we talk about creativity, talk to people like you, writers, and talk to footballers, um, which can be creative, I suppose. They're not always creative, but it's sort of a form of creativity. Yeah. It's just about talking to people in their industry and how they deal with difficult times, as well as talking a load of shit, which I'm sure we can easily do. No problem. So so you've written a couple of books. Yeah. Um, one about cycling, one about a nutty footballer. Yeah. Um, yeah, tell us a bit about them. Well, yeah, I wrote a cycling book. Uh, God, it was uh, 11 years ago now, mm. 12 years ago now, called Cycling Back to Happiness, which was a bit, to be honest... It's not something I'm always very proud of because it was a bit like not not for the reason it was a bit of a therapy therapy right. for me but but, but a therapy a, a project. therapy project because I rushed it right and as a writer nothing gets you more than being told there's a spelling mistake in it and stuff like that oh, it yeah, kills yeah. you and because when it's published you can't rub it out no and but it was with a small publisher it's something I needed to do at the time and, and at the time um, the, I mean the backstory of it in a nutshell is uh, my my mum got a brain tumour mm. and died very young at like 56 and she wow. she'd had it for like two months and died and by the worst of coincidences my ex-wife's mother also got a brain tumour at the same time and died within another nine months at an even younger age of 54 and I'd already lost my dad at 54 as well which is like mental because like my oh whole my family God. like lived till you know, like they're 80 and 90 with like their nasal hair growing into their ears <laughs> and that's just the women but um, you know so and I'd always had this thing I've always had this thing about travelling and adventures mm. real itchy feet wanderlust but I don't like flying petrified mm. of flying so I can only get on boats and then mm. when I get anywhere on a boat I just want to come straight back home again I used to be because I used to have this get this like can't put my finger in it, but it's like overbearing, like homesickness that like I just needed to get back home and mm. I felt all wobbly and used to get really anxious about it and panic attacky. So that, you know, not really the uh, the skills you need for a, um, for, for a for a successful career as an adventurer. <laughs> but so obviously, you know, when the, when the stuff happened with my mum and that, I sort of yeah. made myself a promise that I was going to, you know, I was going to do something about it. And uh, obviously... I knew I had fairly strong legs because I'd always play football. If it was a if it was something to do with rowing, I'd be useless because I've got no upper half. It's just all sort of from my belly button downwards. I don't know. You look all right to me. Oh, thank you, darling. Um, so and I've got sort of got into cycling because mm. my, my ankles and stuff are getting quite knackered and stuff. So I'd wanted to sort of get into something else. I'd always had this like like also this this calling to like have a bit of a bike tour, you know, like getting the old tent and the sleeping bag on the back and all your, all your stuff in saddlebags. Mm. So I decided when my mum died. 
and I'd sorted all the you know the crappy stuff out with the wheel and you know and all the other sort of things that I was going to take a bit of time out and I was going to do this cycling adventure and there's, there's this route called the North Sea Cycle Route, which is like a six thousand kilometre loop all up the English coast and it goes through Holland. Germany, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway as well. Yeah. Uh, so I'd seen. I thought well, that's capable, and I thought, and I want to do this as a tribute to her and to like beat this anxiety. Yeah. And I did it. I got as far as Norway, and I had a right dodgy knee, so I had to turn around about two thousand miles into it. But as far as I was concerned, I'd done what I set out to mm-hmm. do. I'd started it off on my own from Harwich over to Holland, um, and I did a few weeks by myself, and it was really liberating. There were a few times I was a little bit oh, but. But I stuck at it, did it, because obviously I had that, you know, impetus from from my mum, because mm. she was so strong with what happened to her, like sort of, you know, and um, and then a mate sort of flew in for a few weeks and, and met me, parachuted in, um, and met me in Germany, and to be fair, his name was Reese, and it was a great thing for him as well, because at the time he was going through like a, a really tough time. I, th- I think he'd been doing a few naughty things that he shouldn't have been done that had affected his mind. Right. And he always says to me that I changed his life in coming out with me for them few weeks. And it changed my life because it beat my anxiety. And it made me realise it was nicer not to do it all by myself, but to share it with someone else because we had a you know really good rapport. And you know, it's like when you go away with someone for a long time, it's re- you can get on each other's tits, whether you're the bestest of mates you know, possible. But we mm. really clicked, you know, and he cracked me up. He'd like to see her, we'd be cycling along and he'd, He'd see a fox with a fe- really furry tail, and in, uh, sorry, a, a cat with a really furry tail, and in, in his little way, say, "You seen that cat? Got raped by a fox." <laughs> you know, oh, cheers, Reese. But do you know what I mean? But those sort of things, you know, just cycling along, mate, like yeah, observations. Yeah. You know, mate, I bet yeah, that made the cycle journey a lot yeah, easier on yeah. the legs. But we had a great time. Then he, he had to bail out in Gothenburg. I carried on to Norway, and you know, and since then he's married. He's got two kids. He's a paramedic. Before that, he weren't really doing anything, and mm. he's he's a bit agoraphobic because when he said to me he was going to come and join me, I said. Well, how are you going to? How are you going to get to meet me? I said, "We're well, going to push your bike through your letterbox because you ain't left your flat for about six months." You know, so and that was great as well. So, but it, it opened, so you, but you, so you both went with a, a, an issue to yeah, deal with. Yeah, and it opened my eyes. It wasn't the, just the adventure; it, the freedom, and and again, so it was like a therapy. And cycling is so good for your head because right. you're out there. You know, I was cycling for like seven, eight hours a day, then camping up somewhere. And just that freedom of when you're on the road, and even now when I'm, I'm thinking of stuff I need to do, like work-wise stuff like that, I'll, I'll cycle, like do 20 miles up to Wakering and back or something or whatever from my house. And it just really clears your head mm. and it just lets you think about things and process things in a better way. And it and it really does take away anxieties and stuff like that and just give you a lot more Settles focus. you down, makes you yeah. feel more balanced about everything. Yeah, yeah. and I've, I've done articles with people in cycling and magazines and stuff like around that book and... You know, there's a real link between sport and helping, you know, out with mental health problems. Mm, and, yeah. I, and I think cycling is a great way to do it. And I've, and I've done it to other people, told other people that, and they've done it and they've found that. And as I say, for me, you know, it really cured that side of things for me because, uh, you know, um, since then I've gone on to have loads of adventures, done loads of cycling, you know, John Groats, the Land's End. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have a little bits and bobs. We go to cycle tours every year. And a, a, couple, of, a couple of years or sorry, a year after the cycling trip, um, I actually got on a plane. No, sorry, that's a lie. I got on a boot. A, bu- a boot? A boot. A boat. You, got, you got in someone's boot. boot. You got in a boat. Yeah, back to them, uh, back to them boots. But no, I, I blagged, unbelievably, my, my biggest claims of fame ever, I blagged a free press trip on the Queen Mary transatlantic nice. crossing to New York. No way. Uh, offering to do a write-up in this great commuter paper to London, The Echo, <laughs> no. which I did. Wow. With a lovely headline, there's something about Mary. But... Um, but yeah, and that got me a free passage to America. What? Bought a camper van over there that I'd met from some guy on a camper van site, uh, site called um, thesamba.com. Great camper van up near Boston. So I caught a bus there from New York and drove a whole lap of the States. Fuck me. And flew back. Oh, right. Yeah, and how did you feel about flying? Better? To, to be fair, it was all right. To yeah, be fair. Yeah. It's not something I'm ever going to like, but if no. I have to do it, I'll do it. Yeah, but, right. Um, so so, that, yeah. so the cycle, cycling trip and a bit of an adventure therapy, yeah. silenced your mind and yeah. you know got rid of that sort of anxiety that you got from being away from home. Yeah. yeah that's pretty, that's amazing. Well, there's no way yeah. I could have gone to America for like five, six months if, no. before. And, and if so, you'd have said to me like, you know, 12 years ago, oh, you'll, you'll drive a, a whole lap of the mm. States. I mean, when you think of that, even now I think, oh my God. I've driven a lap of America in a camper. That's van. stupid. That's crazy. That's but it was amazing. Yeah, amazing. I, I bet you saw some unbelievable fit. What? Yeah. What the whole way round? Or? So I got off at New York, got a bus up to this place called Attleboro near um, near uh, not far from not far from Boston. Yeah. Where I bought the van, and it's really weird over there. It's not like us. They, no. you have to. It's like the Simpsons. You have to go to a place where everyone's queuing up to do their eye test, like the little bloke with the crumply face with the glasses. Mole man. Yeah, mole man. Yeah. 
They do that, and then you have to take off the number plate from the people that had the van with a screwdriver, take it into the place where Mole Man is. Someone behind the counter then gives you your own number plate that you Mayor registered Quimby. for. Yeah, that's been made in the penitentiary down the road, Shut. and then you have to put it in with a screwdriver. Then that's yours, and you and you just piss off. off you go. Piss yeah. off around, do the lap of yeah. the states. So went that's up amazing. To, so went up to Maine, Acadia National Park, cut straight across the top Route 90, pretty much Chicago and Yellowstone Park. The most amazing week of my life been in Yellowstone Park. Wow. And then up to Seattle. And the San Juan Islands, then all the way down the West Coast, you know, to San Francisco, mm. uh, Santa Cruz, went mm. surfing, loved being there. Amazing. Um, down at San Diego, then back up across through the desert, Vegas, through the south, up to uh, North Carolina, where they make Dawson's Creek, which is very nice, very in Wilmington, nice. and also Blue Velvet, if you've seen that film, which is equally very sweet and nice. Uh, have you seen Blue Velvet? Not seen Blue Velvet. Check it out. Um, and then people that have seen Blue Velvet will know okay, what I mean. Or, it's the, I, haven't it's the, seen, I, I haven't seen any films. It's the furthest thing from... Uh, Dawson's Creek ever. And then, yeah, back up to New York, so in a loop, and then, and then fly back home and then ship the van back. Wow, amazing. Yeah. That's crazy. But so, that, so that was a cure, a big cure. Yeah, right. And that was on your own? No, that was with uh, with uh, my former partner. Right, I see. Yeah. That's yeah. a crazy, crazy thing, a crazy trip, man. Why did you do that? <laughs> oh, mate, no, but it was a trip of a lifetime. How many miles you know? is that? I did about, uh, I think it was about 16,000 miles. That's unbelievable. The petrol's so cheap over there. Is I mean, it? it's just so cheap over there, full stop. And, yeah. I, and having the van... I mean, I drove that. I mean, I know nothing about cars mm. or mechanics. I'm like just about putting the petrol in, getting the tyres pumped up, and and, uh, and doing the dipstick. Yeah, yeah. but um, I'm good at that. I've quite, I've got good action. Have you a good dipstick yeah, action? Yeah, in. okay. And, and everyone's like, oh, we well, hope you're good at cars because you know these things are always breaking down. These old camper vans. Break down once. It, once. What? Because it was like an '86 Wolfsburg like right. van. It's really old. I was in San Francisco on the hills, like the streets of San Francisco, the big hills. Wicked. Got stuck in gear, wouldn't move. I felt like I had to sort of like really tiptoe out the van because it was going to tip over. Two hundred dollars to repair it. Happy days. And I did two hundred dollars, which at the time was about one hundred and twenty quid in fifteen thousand miles in repairs. That's madness. No, great, amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, San Francisco. I can pay homage to that trip. Then you, you can tell me do. where else. I'll go and look at it. You can. I'll take yeah. a picture. I'll, I'll tell you where that hill. But do you know what a great thing. But I will tell you what, like, it's it was really uh, the people in America are so really are cool mm. you know everyone was so never had any trouble there everyone was so like welcoming when we broke down that day like some old little old lady was running out of the house going you okay do you want to come into my house you know do you need to use my toilet and you know stuff <laughs> did and, you go into her house yeah what was it like yeah it's lovely yeah, yeah. lots of floral stuff what was everywhere. the toilet like it tasted lovely the water mm, delicious the you get thirsty San Francisco was hot yeah. she gave me a straw is that her name San Francisco it was San Francisco yeah <laughs> but um but yeah, they were lovely, you know, and, and again, the beauty of the van was a lot of the time I was just sleeping on um, roadside rest areas on the interstate. Right. And because I was, you know, because it's so like straight over there, unless you're in a big city, the roads are dead. Mm. And I was doing like 650 stretches some days in miles. Like That's one crazy. Hit. But you do it. And then as long as there's other people at these roadside rest areas, you yep. just keep there for nothing. You can cook up all your own food and stuff in the van. So wow. save me bundles. There's a book. There's a book in that. Oh, well. Yes, maybe. could be. No, maybe. No, that was. Do you know what? And I thought about doing that as a book, but mm. it was like I just wanted to go away and, mm. and 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 see if I could do it and test myself. Do you yeah, know what I mean, and, yeah. and, and it was job done. And great not memories. everything has to be a book. Just, no, exactly. You got to enjoy life sometimes. Yeah, yeah big time. Yeah, you got to put, as the footballers say, put the ball away, put the yeah. pen away, put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah. But you know, again, with the cycling, then doing that, it was like another level. Mm. Of like proving, you know, I think Pro- like you just want to proving prove to yourself, you can do things. You can do yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, and I, and that's I did turn into a big wobbly mess. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you did it. You no. turned into. And I'm, a I mean, talking to your you turned, like you turned into a lovely mess. I did. If a I lovely mess. Say. Thanks very much. Yeah. So that cured. Well, cured your paranoia and anxiety yeah. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. So then you worked for. You wrote, wrote about football directly after that, or at the same time? How did that happen? How did it come? No, about? I, I, when I was at school, I went to a local school here, Tommy Moore. Never wanted to go there. Hated it. And uh, when I was at school, you was never... I always wanted to be a writer. Mm. So even from like a little kid at primary school, I used to write like exercise books and exercise books full of like Doctor Who, Star Wars crossover <laughs> stories, you know? Putting my hand Solo figure in a in a cup of ice in the, in the evening and like, you know, putting it in the freezer in the morning, frosting it out, carbon freeze like, under the hot tap. <laughs> but I, and I always wanted to be a writer and just um, never pushed into it at school. No, mm. no, you need to go and work Do in the bank proper. in London like everybody yeah. else, you know, get into insurance and all that. And, and I, was, I was never, you know... Not condoning it, cause it's a different world now, but I could never be bothered at school because I was really frustrated with, yeah. with things. So I think Well, school make, feels pointless, yeah. It does. Yeah, it, didn't get many GCSEs, could never be bothered to revise. Did my English a year early and got that. So I got out of school, didn't really want to go to college or uni. Mm. I had no 
no desire to do that. So I ended up going to London to get the insurance job, working for General Accident Insurance in Hyde Park at the age of 17 mm. for £7,800 a year. Bloody hell. Going up to the West End every day. It was uh, worth a lot more then. Yeah. yeah it's like a million pounds in those days. <laughs> but, um, and, and I'm, again, touch wood, never been one to have days off sick and stuff like that. Mm. And like, I was there for nine months and I had like 25 days off sick. <laughs> I used to go around people's houses in the morning in Rayleigh where I used to live and say, oh, can you ring up and pretend to be my brother or my dad? And, you know, I don't want to go in today and stuff because no, I hated yeah. it. I hated it. Well, that's creative. It's a creative yeah. way to get out of it. So I was so scared of giving up because my mum, I didn't want to get a slap off my mum. Right, so, yeah, uh, you, you felt yeah. like you had to do that yeah, job. Yeah, but, which is... but eventually I'd been so late that they... I got called downstairs to another man that was like mole man, like in his uh, in his little office. A lot of mole men a in lot your of mole life. Men, a lot of mole men, and uh, to tell me that I had to come in and work like ten hours a day for the next three months to uh, to build build back the flexi time that I'd uh, you know right. incurred, and I was just like, no, I wouldn't leave. Right. And so then I, you left. So I left. So I left, and then I got enrolled in a for a mate of mine, Paul, who actually owns Argosy Toys down the London oh, yeah. Road. Um, we 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 enrolled in a uh, media course at Southend College, like a City and Guilds media course course and I really loved the teacher there Mark Varnell he was such a lovely guy but again within six months I never saw it through mm. but it gave me that renewed taste and me and this guy Paul we actually started up a music fanzine called On The Scene which we produced once a month 10,000 copies and we used to get, we used to drive up all the way up to Colchester Chelmsford around here up to London one night and dropping them around all the pubs and clubs for nothing wicked and we in that, you know I've always been this great believer like if you want to do something you can do it mm. so in those days like I just got on the phone to people so I've been quite good at talking, and getting, and I got in with all these music agencies. So we were like at the time we were like interviewing like like the bands like indie bands from like the nineties like Carter and Ride and um, you know um, Teenage Fan Club and all stuff like this. And we were, so we were getting to put this in our magazine. And then I worked at the Toothbrush. I was a, I used to work behind the bar. Then I was a DJ and was involved in all the gigs and stuff there. So that was really good. And then through that, I. Um, that's really bizarre. I, I, but then I wanted to get onto a newspaper or something because I knew mm. that was going to have a limited shelf life. I think we did about six six issues. And there was this little guy down the toothbrush in Rayleigh who looked a bit Time Lordish, And I didn't really know him, but I knew he used to do some like band write-ups of the Yellow Advertiser. And I literally went up to him in the toothbrush one night. His name's Simon Bishop. And I went, hello, mate. I said, uh, I bet you really like Doctor Who, don't you? <laughs> And he went, yeah, I do actually. So we got talking about Doctor Who and you know uh, the benefits of having a long scarf in winter and uh, jelly babies and, and a time and travel machine. Yeah, and a sonic screwdriver. Got to speak about sonic screwdriver. And within a week, he had me in the yellow advertiser. No way. Working, doing the restaurant write-ups and the uh, advertorials for local businesses. But I said I wanted to do the South End reports, so mm. I started doing the South End reports straight away. And it all went from there. And it all went from there. So yeah. Yellow Advertiser to then, Echo. Well, no, there was a paper called the South End News that started for a while, and mm. I was the sports editor of that. It only mm. lasted for about six months, and I that was when South End were in the uh, old championships. It was then, mm. so it would have been the, like the Dave Regis, Andy Thompsons, you know, players like that. Stan uh, Mike Collymore. Marsh, that sort of time. No, no after, after after Collymore, yeah. Mike Marsh, that sort of era. And then I went back to then I went to the Echo because I actually no sorry went back to the Advertiser. Then I got a job at the Echo because I actually scooped the Echo, which you should never do as a weekly paper that mainly just lines budgies cages. The Advertiser <laughs> of Prince Charles coming to Canvey to open a youth centre. Right. I actually scooped the Echo, which should not happen. Right. A daily paper should not get scooped by the <laughs> Advertiser. And then I got a job in there because of that. So I had to buy my time on news. Then eventually I took over from Howard Southwood, who was covering Blues before me and used to give me lifts to the games. Like I, in turn, gave Chris Phillips lifts to the games. He right. does it now. And, um, and yeah, and, and took over as the Blues reporter, which was, yeah, great. And then, for, and then I, did, I went to Sky Sports for a bit as well, actually launched their internet site, Bloody which hell. used to be me and one other guy copying and pasting press association copy about all the games on the, onto their website about quarter to five. Well, now I imagine they've got like a cast of thousands. Yeah, probably. Yeah, and then um, back to the Echo again a few times. And then obviously 10 years ago I went to the Daily Mirror. Mm, and been there ever since. Yeah, and again, another, you know, again, it's it's so weird in life, like who you know. I did the, uh, covered the Man United game and I was in the, uh, when Southend beat Man United and I was in the overflow next to a guy called Dave Kidd who is now the chief sports writer of the Sun. And I knew him from, I'd just bump into him on the circuit when I was covering South End games every now and then. He used to like write really sort of a quirky column. I think he, he, he come down, the first time I met him, he come down to Roots Hall and he wrote a piece about the old goalkeeper, Mel Capleton, yeah, right, yeah. being the, uh, you know, uh, League Two's answer to Rennie Higuita, you know, the Colombian scorpion <laughs> kick man, you know. 
So we got talking about it. And he used to go to the toothbrush That's and stuff. Cool. So we had a bit of a you know thing in common. He was from mm. Ilford. He used to get the toothbrush down to the toothbrush. toothbrush. He used to, <laughs> used to run in the old days. <laughs> and I when I came when I came back, I think it might have been from America. And I just I just dropped him a line and said, all right, on Facebook, I said, all right, Dave, what are you up to? I said, you still at the Sun because he was at the Sun then. He said, no. He said, I'm, I'm at the People now. I'm the uh, I'm the uh, deputy editor on the on the people. He said. He said. I said. We any shifts? He said. Well, can you sub? Sub it. I said. Yeah, I can. Yeah. He said. So he got me in for a shift at Canary Wharf, and it, and it went from there. Went from there. Bloody and, hell. And then they owned the mirror as well. So I walked into the mirror, and uh, there was a guy that I used to work at Yellow Advertiser with all them years ago. When I no started way. Out, yeah. That's crazy. Who was one of the assistant editors? Wow. Then another guy that I sat next to doing a book signing for the cycling book at some book fair somewhere, and then the guy that was in charge, the chief sub, Paul Carter. And I'm very good at faces and voices, but as soon as he spoke, I'd done work experience with him as an 18-year-old at the Express. That's ridiculous. And then this, all these years later, like I was like in my late 30s here, mm. and it's like, he didn't remember me. No. But, but, and I remember being at the Express that day and being so out of my depth at 18, not knowing, and just wanting to go home. Yeah, I could have cried, I was so out of my depth. <laughs> and Why? I, because it was just... Oh, I just didn't have a clue. They were doing it in those days, like now we, we sub-edit and design pages, it's all very easy, done yeah. the way things are now. In those days... I get, I get sent a box now with a bit of copy in it and I have to cut it to fit the box and write the headline. Mm. But, but in those days, you had to do all like machine code around things to make things bold, you know, do about yeah, 25 yeah. different no symbols way. just to make something bold. Sure. So at 18, yeah, I was yeah. like, I ain't got a clue. Oh, mate, that's another world. That yeah. world doesn't even exist anymore. So I could have just cried, mate, just wanted yeah, to go yeah. But I remember this guy's voice straight away and then I think I spoke to him and he was like, oh, there's not lot going on here, mate. Um, I'll let you know if we can get anything in. And then I was actually doing John O'Groats Land's End at the time in 2010 and I was actually on the boat the ferry from the Isle of Arran coming back to the mainland and he rang me up and said, oh, can you write this down? I've got 15 shifts for you in the next month. So I'm just writing all these oh, wicked. all these shifts down for the mirror that I've got to carry with me all the way to Land's End. And I, <laughs> I don't forget them before I get back. And then I just went in, shifted and then got off the contract. So, That's yeah. madness. Yeah, but been there since. It's who you know. Mm. Life is very weird. Yeah, well, the, there's life a lot of coincidences in, yeah. in, in your life. Do you believe yeah. in fate? I do, yeah. That's one of the questions, which is stupid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you ask the questions. Yeah. I was going to say, do you believe in fate or do you think it's just all cause and effect? No, I do believe it. I do I think believe. things happen for a reason. Mm. I, don't, I don't believe all this, oh, you've got a certain path and all that. I believe there's a sort of like a path but it's up to you to it's like an old choose your adventure Dungeons and Dragons yeah, game where choose. you can open the cupboard to find the apple turn to page 27 you can open the other door and get your head bitten off by a dragon turn to page 28 or you know yeah, you, it, it's it's for you to decide where that path leads yeah you point yourself in the right direction and you yeah. can do anything but, yeah. I, but I've had a lot of like coincidences like that in my life Me and, too. I, and I do yeah. think it's it's very surreal I, mm. think, I think I think the other day I was watching a documentary on Roy Orbison mm. great documentary and he died, and then his wife died a few years later on exactly the same date as he died. That's crazy. And things like that, it's just like, yeah, I, it's too bizarre they to happen, be a coincidence. They happen to me all the time. I mean, it might not be an example, but I'm going to San Francisco, as you know, for yeah. my honeymoon, and you broke your van broke down there. Yeah. yeah so that's, that's an example. They happen to me all the time, every day. Um, and I, I believe they're just signs that you're in the right, going in the right direction. There's definitely something spooky, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. There's yeah. an energy that sort of brings us all together or apart or however you w- want it to go, basically. Yeah. I think um, there's an episode I did with a, a guy called Bobby, and he um, is, fully believes that you ma- you can manifest everything that happens to you. You can decide whatever way you go. You can decide exactly what's going to happen to you as long as you point yourself in the right direction, right attitude, right sort of right time is a, is a, is a, you know definitely a factor but something else would just happen and, and you'll go go in the direction you meant to go yeah, but my, my life that. is just full of them coincidences like I yeah, said same. to you just now like it, sound, I, it sounds like I'm, you're, I'm talking to myself yeah really yeah. alright well it's not such a bad thing <laughs> but like that night in the toothbrush yeah. if that guy had said no I hate Doctor Who fuck off pal what are you talking about yeah yeah I might never have had a writing career. No, no. I might never have written books and worked for national newspapers and, and, and covered South End, which was my dream, you know, as a kid. Yeah, and yeah. I wouldn't have done and all then those wrote, things. wrote your hero's book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, another weird coincidence that you just, um, that just happened. I've, I've got the number tattoo, that, that tattoo stands for number 22. Okay. And a number you said earlier was yeah. 22 to yeah. around. Yeah. It's fucking weird, man. 22 red cards. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, strange. That's strange, really strange. crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, and when I when I come and um, watch you um, speak and, and present the book you did with Roy McDonough, um, I, I you know I didn't know I was going to get that tattooed on me. I never knew that we'd be doing this. No. It's just something that pulls people together. I can't What's the explain. day today? It is. Um, is it twenty two? Twenty second. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, is Mate, that? That is so mad. Yeah, it's that crazy. Is so mad. I, I can't. I, 
some people probably think we're mad hippies for doing that. Yeah, but um, that's so crazy, man. Mate, it's so that's weird. So crazy. Yeah, I don't even know what to <laughs> say. <laughs> yeah, oh, crazy. What's the best thing about being alive? What's your favourite thing about being alive? I'm at the moment, my little boy. Okay. Yeah, mm. that, I live for my little boy. Yeah, just doing everything. Six years you can. old, doing everything with him, and again, just like as you get older. When I, as I watch him grow and change, seeing myself in him, mm. and it opens up windows in your mind and gives you memory flashbacks that you've not thought about for years. Like Amazing. for instance, I was watching him swimming the other night, and he was on his back learning to swim, and he's like thrashing his legs too much when he should be keeping them like nice and calm underneath, and he's mm. going sideways into the side of the pool, and it's like, and then I can remember doing the same thing and looking up and going into the side as well. Yeah, right. And you see yourself, and it's so surreal, but yeah. it's so rewarding. It's yeah, so I, lovely. Bet, I bet, I bet. Sadie said exactly the same thing when we did the episode with her. And I, I said, um, do you get, I think when I have kids, I will get a thrill out of showing them the things that I love. Like South and United, for example, yeah. certain songs, films, and you just kind of, hoping that they're gonna gonna like it yeah. do, do you get that do you... yeah do you know what but I've always been like really um, conscious of not pushing my pushing stuff onto things, my, I don't yeah. want to be a dad reliving yeah, my yeah. life through my kids so like football for instance Lee, he's, he's like football crazy for playing football at the yeah, moment. yeah so I took him good yeah I took him to somewhere like when he was about three and he didn't want to go he didn't want to go again and it was mm. he was in the stage where he wanted to pick the ball up all the time and, right. and he didn't want to go so I never made him go again mm. and then he started once he started school he wanted to go and he plays with his friends now every Saturday and, he, and every sun, other Sunday as well and he loves training and he loves to tackle and get stuck in uh, and that's what I used to be like <laughs> so it's great to watch him being like that it's really mad it's yeah, really what, mad what is, what is that you just that's just something within your DNA that attracts you to that and you've passed it on to your son yeah, yeah and he loves Doctor Who and I've never made him watch Doctor Who he loves Doctor Who because as a writer mm. one of the big inspirations for me as a kid was watching Tom Baker be Doctor Who with the long scarf and the curly yeah. hair, mm. which is why I yeah. look like I am now. <laughs> but that, to me, what made me want to write as a kid. Okay, and, yeah. and he's and he's looking at that now, and he knows it all. And he's like, oh, he's like, oh, Daddy, he says, well, I want to watch the episode with the Mondasian Cybermen. And I'm like, how do you That's... even know things like that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, how do you even know that? But then the things he says, you know, like I'll be arrogant sometimes. My missus will say to me, I love you, and I'll go, yeah, I know, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then the other day, you know, I'm with him, and you just think they're, they're listening all the time. You yeah, don't yeah. realise, and I'll go, I love you, mate, and he'll go. I know, Daddy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just things like that are just so cool, though. Yeah, that's so really cool. cool. It's yeah, so I bet cool. that is the yeah. coolest, coolest thing that's ever uh, happened to you. Coolest thing that's ever happened to me. God, that's a really hard one because I think I'm lucky that I've had a lot of really good things happen to me, and most of the people I've wanted to meet, I've met. Mm. That's a really, really hard one. Well, the coolest thing that's happened to me, having my kids. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, that's cool. definitely the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. Second coolest thing that's ever happened to you. Second coolest thing that's ever Being here with you. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I was, exp- I knew, uh, you know, you don't have to say that. Yeah. Don't worry, yeah. But We're no, lots of... Third thing. Third, third thing. thing. But I've, you know, like I say, there's so many things, like I, re- I wrote my Football Heroes book. I covered South End for the Echo, which is what I always wanted to do mm. as a kid. I work for a national newspaper. Yeah. I've written books. When I was doing the music stuff, like I was really into this band Carter, the Unstoppable Sex Machine, mm. that did the song Sheriff Fat Man. Don't know if you know it. No, it mentions I don't. Leon C. I but they were like massive at the time. Like they headlined Glastonbury. What? And I ended up helping them run their fan club and used to stay around one of their houses in Brixton. So Mate, I've always managed crazy. to get older people that I want to get older and do things. So yeah, I've, I've been lucky. I think you can put yourself in a position. A lot of people don't have the the nous or the clout or whatever you want to call it to put themselves in that position probably because they're made to feel like they're not good enough and they can't do it so you've got to cut through that and also feelings of like you can feel anxious and it, make, it stops you doing things like that I think I've, I've always just like pushed myself though yeah you know like I say with the whole anxiety thing mm. and stuff and you know and I've had some like quite crap things happen but it's like mm. I watch things on telly where like you know someone dies or something and they're like <laughs> and I'm like, like is there something wrong with me because yeah. even though I'm gutted and obviously mm. been so upset I'm like I move on to the next thing. Yeah, because uh, you know, I guess I've always pushed myself. Yeah, because you know that you're sort of striving for more, or you know, there's. I think also when the, all those coincidences, I don't know if you think about this, but all the coincidences for me, they make me have a really sort of a spiritual outlook. Or I, I believe that there's something controlling it, so it, it makes me not panic or get sad or scared. Yeah, at the amount that you know. Other, other people get I don't know I, I, the, the coincidence thing I, that makes me feel like somebody's watching Yeah, I don't know whether they are we don't yeah I hope they are because mm. I think that's the thing that probably worries me the most is that death's the final the thing mo- yeah which what do you, do you think it is well I was raised Catholic Okay, so obviously I've had it all you know mm. rammed down my throat and yeah. that's one thing I didn't want for my kid I didn't want him to go to Catholic no. school so I wanted him to make up his own mind mm. you know if he wants to like you know wear like leather sandals and 
you know, read the Bible and stuff and grow long hair and a beard, and then, you know, good, good luck to him. Like but, you did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, funnily enough, when he goes past Our Lady of Lord's Church on the on sea, he used to look up the statue and say, Daddy, why is there a statue of you there when it was Jesus? He thought it was me. Uh, but um, but um, I had it rammed down my throat, and I've not been to church, obviously, for donkey's years. But like, if I go to a funeral now, I know all the replies. It's like right. it's brainwashed into you. Like, they'll just come straight yeah. out, you know, to the mass. Yeah. I, want to, I want to believe there's something else because... I think it's such a waste. I mean, you can fry your brains thinking about it, that all these mm. amazing things we've done and all these memories we've got, that when you die, that's it, and they it's all disappear. gone. But I, I have an argument with myself often. That's the beauty of it, though, is it? But it's so final, and that's it. I just, yeah. It's a waste. But then I think... It's your great your to book's think, still it's, there. It's great to... Yeah, I've, met, I've left my mark. Yeah. But, but it's great to think that like there's a heaven and all that sort of thing. Yeah, like, yeah. Hey, like, I really hope there is. Mm. But then you think, like, how the Bible... Mm. and like again don't want to get struck down by lightning here but um, you know you think like is it like the Lord of the Rings of its day mm. yeah no, but you know yeah, what I mean yeah, well, no, I don't well, mean that in a horrible yeah, way no, but true. You know trying, I mean? to, trying to explain uh, the unexplainable I suppose yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. then and then or you know was or was Jesus an astronaut with like superior technology that he could cure blindness and things like that but, yeah. but, but I'm just like I just like to think there's something like, even if it's like when I, I mean I remember when I went to see my dad when he was dead and I went mm. to see him in the chapel of rest and like with the old blanket just pulled up underneath his neck and I just mm. it was like God it, he, I remember kissing his head obviously he was cold because he'd mm. obviously been in the fridge or whatever but mm. it was like that's not, you're not there it's just like a shell and mm. I'd like to think that that shell's left behind and yeah. maybe we do float around somewhere and there's still somewhere. some consciousness I feel, I feel I, what I th- hope what I believe I suppose it depends what day you ask me but that's most subjects so it depends yeah. what day you ask me is what my thought of it is but I think that probably our <laughs> consciousness is is a thing that you can't explain um, 75% of the um, of what's in the universe um, scientists don't even know what it is dark energy or dark matter they don't it know could, what 75% of what's in the sea yeah, the yeah, universe. yeah exactly yeah. so those things that can't be proven or explained uh, could well be consciousness where it, it goes somewhere that you can't explain um, and I, I don't know if it, it, it will be it will probably I can't imagine it will be like a fairy tale world but I can I what I think it could be is just a big ball of energy and light that you, your consciousness goes there and you just understand everything. Yeah, but I just like, if that was the case, that'd be great, but I'd just like it to be that I'm still aware of who I am when I'm in that big ball of light. Yeah, fire. yeah, I think... And what I did, yeah, and yeah. I'm waiting there for, you know... Yeah. Um, that you still know that what you, still you don't know what just you forget did, about yeah. your life and then you're somewhere else and mm. it starts again. Yeah, but maybe that, maybe when, if, if it is true, what I, what I think some days, depends what day you ask me, um, that it won't matter because you'll get to that place and everything will make sense and you'll it, you'll just know everything so what you did before is you know not important but is every ant there every ant um is probably not there because but why should they fucking, be different why should they be fucking different to us yeah, but why fucking, should they be different to us they're, they're arseholes what and we're not ants well you but know no one fucks the world up more than we do yeah do they? yeah that's true but ants pff, i don't know every ant could be there floating about yeah but that's what i'm saying you know if don't we want that great, do we no we don't well that's flying ants isn't it that's true. I hate flying ant day. But Fuck then, me, that yeah, pisses so do me I, off. But then hopefully, then seagulls have souls as well because then they'll be there eating them. Yeah, oh, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, or uh, frogs. Yeah, frogs, yeah. Fro- what else eats flying ants? I hate flying ants. Um, that's uh, no. pissed me off. It's sort yeah. of giving me... No, that, that one day when you get flying yeah. ants. Especially when you've got a long, long barn it. It's yeah, not you the one, get is stuck it? in yeah, there. Yeah, no, it ain't the one, mate, pull is it? it out. Yeah, no, it's not the one. I never it? understand that. What's the whole point of that? No, I don't get it. Well, it's the day they breed, isn't it? It's all the babies flying around, isn't it? When the old queen's spawn is taking its first steps out. Yeah, right. So it's just all babies flying around technically yeah. Yeah, but imagine giving fucking birth to 20,000 babies that's true imagine going to a, a parallel universe where ants rule the world and, and we sort of fly about and we there's loads of, of our human babies flying about I'm just about. thinking about the size of the queen's vag after letting 20,000 babies out I can't stop thinking about it now no. I don't think I'm ever going to stop thinking about a queen ant's vagina ever again I think this is the I might change the name of the podcast to queen's ants vag yeah I like it or or um Dave's Honey. Yeah, Dave's Honey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, God, that's my porn star name. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Dave Honey. Yeah, Dave Honey. I like it. Anyway, I hope that with all the all the theories we've just discussed, yeah. that the fact that all these little coincidences happen in life mm. means that there is something beyond our understanding. I just think, sometimes that happens to me and I just think... It's a bit spiritual, isn't it? I just think, fuck me, that can't, that can't be just a coincidence. It's very, I think it's quite spiritual, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'd just like to say, like, my whole career has been down to one conversation. 
I mean, obviously, you've got to be able to do it, yeah, but, yeah. but down to one conversation that could have gone either way. Like, we're talking about the path thing. That's amazing. You know? Yeah, but some people wouldn't have that understanding of their situation. People live in their own reality and, you know, they perceive what, what they perceive, but it doesn't... Some people would just think that it's got loads of loads of things that contributed to you getting that job if it was yeah. someone else. Yeah. But you understand sort of the fragility of life Um but the importance of it, yeah. like yeah, yeah, one conversation led yeah. you to be an editor massively. of the Mirror Sports, section. yeah, ma- massively, yeah, yeah. But some people believe they they make stuff up in their head, and it makes the situation become more complicated in their own reality. So they can't. It makes them it difficult for them to analyze situations. You're yeah, like arrogant, yeah, exactly. So much arrogance whereas in you, the modern you, world. Whereas you never would. Some people think, ah, oh, yeah, but you know, I work well. You of course worked hard, but it's down to one conversation. Some people think, well, oh, you know, I really, I really deserved that, and it was all these things I did, and it was because of the way I did it. And they would, but really, if you strip it back, it's just because you had one conversation, yeah. yeah, which is pretty unbelievable. And really. there's a song by Electronic, you know, Electronic, yeah, called "Getting Away with It." <laughs> and I, that's my theme show. Uh, that's what you. That's, that's what my you theme show. Yeah, me. that's my theme show. Yeah. I've been getting away with it all my life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, everyone's Sung on by the Neil Tennant. Yeah, everyone's on the fucking black. Yeah, yeah. I, the, the older you get in your life, you realise well, everyone's fucking making it up. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you just got if you can if you've got the ability to face yourself in the right direction, you can fucking do whatever you want. Yeah. Agreed. Quote in your book: Don't let your biggest fear stand in the way of your dreams, even if your biggest dreams happen to be your biggest fears. Yeah, yeah, that's what you said. They're your words. Yeah, and they're true. Yeah, and that was the you know the getting on the bike and and doing what most people wouldn't. Be, well, I don't think most people would cycle two thousand miles to Norway, but no. just but just um, why would you do that? No, no. Well, yeah, exactly. Why would you do that? But um, but yeah, just you got to face those things, and you know, there's so much more than ever now with social media and everything. You know, mental health is like a massive thing mm. now. I mean, I think it used to be like one in four, but I think they're saying it's like, you know, two in four, f- three in four now yeah. people suffer. And social media's got a massive part to do with that. And not Definitely. just the whole, you know, there's been a lot of stuff on Instagram recently about self-harming and mm. all these terrible things being on there. But I mean, I remember like taking me little and down to Chalkwell Beach in the summer and getting a cup of coffee there in the little kiosk down there mm. and an ice cream for him. And like seeing this girl like all towered up, you know, like bikini and that, and all she did, she was sitting with other people, but all she did for 10 minutes, and I was watching her, she probably thought I was perving over, but I wasn't, mm. was look at, take selfies, put little, you know, brush her hair to the side, yeah. do her little duck lips, mm. do, no, do another one, do another one, do another one, do another And it's like, that has got to be mentally damaging. draining. Very damaging. Another yeah. one was in Henry's Burgers in Lee a few weeks ago. Mm. Sat there, this guy walked in with his missus, proper towies up, sat down with the little dog under the table, you know, stereotypical, he started, they both sat there, they didn't talk, there was On no conversation, phone. taking selfies of themselves, mm. not even each other. This guy got a hat out of a bag and then started putting it on all different ways, round the front, <laughs> round the side, just sitting there taking selfies, put the hat back in, got another one out. So, you know, so, then he went, all right, darling, what do you want to eat? She went, not now, I'm downloading. You know, it's like, <laughs> that has got to be mentally <laughs> exhausting, isn't it? Not down love, I'm downloading. Do you know what I mean? That's downloading got, her burger. Like Mick Jacket, didn't it? But <laughs> that's got to be, it's, but that has got to be drained and it's it's no, you know, my thing was like the, tr- the travel scene, yeah. which I'm like well over that sort of me out, mm-hmm. but like, the world is really, you know, anxiety is like a massive thing at the moment. Mate, it's all, all caused by this, else. yeah, it's all caused by this fake facade that everyone puts on, whether it's on social media or even football, like we said earlier, that there's this like fake reality that doesn't really exist. It's all like instant world. Everyone deserves something for, for nothing. Everyone thinks they've got a divine right to do something, which they have if they work for it. But you can't just expect something to come and fall in your lap. You've got to, you've got to make it happen for yourself. That's... I definitely believe that. Um, but yeah, like the social media is just, you, all you see is just people's happy bits. Yeah. That's and, it. And this whole like culture of fake celebrity. Yeah. Where you're, you know, mm. I'm a, you know, a celebrity big brother or whatever. You know, yeah. you watch it and like, unless they've got like, I don't know, um, the bloke that sticks his hand up Sooty's ass on there. <laughs> you know, like they've been on telly for about 20 years. That's the only one you've sort of heard of. The rest yeah. of them, you've never even seen them before. You know, no. like, or Instagram star. Like, what? Yeah, you know that's what I mean? crazy, isn't it? Yeah. That's like a whole YouTube new world. star. YouTube stars. And which... it's like, you watch these things and I'm like, to, celebrity, the mm. word celeb, to me, a celebrity is like Freddie Mercury. Yeah, right. 
David Bowie. Mm. You know, it's like a real iconic. But it's not real. It's no. like fake, isn't it? It's, mm. it's just not a real world. And unfortunately, people do not live in a real world anymore. No, they don't. And they, they don't, don't communicate. There's nothing sadder than when you go out, and like, I live in Lee, and you walk past the restaurants. And you see the mum and dad sitting there looking at their phones and the kid looking at a tablet, and they're all out having like dinner together. Yeah, yeah. And they're not even weird. talking, they're not even communicating. They're strange. I think like the, the, the best thing you could do is have a conversation a lot of the time. Well, and that's why you go out. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. This is why I'm doing do the podcast because talking to people is the best thing you can do with your time, pretty much. Let's get a blowjob. Yeah, well, and that as well, yeah. But um, no, that's not going to happen, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> That was Not on the first date. That was my next title. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time. First base today, mate. <laughs> but um, the door's locked, though. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, I've said that twice. You now. have now, yes. Yeah. I'll be worried not. the third time. No, okay. yeah. Well, I, might, I won't put that in yet. Okay. But um, maybe it's, it's not locked. It's open. You okay. can leave whenever you like. Okay, Don't leave that. I mean, that might add a bit of edge to this. Yeah, I'm feeling yeah. a bit like sort of dizzy. What was in those drinks? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> show is sponsored by Rehypnol. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask questions. No. Just, you know, just see where life takes you. Yeah. That's the whole message. Yeah. Um, yeah, like that whole fake celebrity world. But I, you know, I don't necessarily think that's bad. It's just totally, totally different to what, you know, David Bowie, like the most credible artist probably ever to be born. Nobody will be like that ever again, probably. Um, no, but like back to my, so the world we live in now, and so back to my little, um, yeah. like six years old. So I can remember being a kid picking up a David Bowie cassette yeah, in my hell. dad's living room stack system and like listening to Starman, you know, and loving it as a kid. Yeah. And now at the same age, he's listening to David Bowie. Yeah, yeah. And we actually went to a, and I've, he's been watching it on YouTube, like putting it on. And we went to a, we went to a party New Year's Eve, just like a family party. Mm. And they had like a karaoke thing on. And he got up and sung Starman pretty much word to word, six amazing. years old. That's amazing. And, and again, watching those little things repeat themselves. Yeah, and that's beautiful. Like, and that's what I want him to be. I want him to be, yeah, yeah. you know. But I think. Because um, they are icons. And, 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 I, and I do think Bowie, Mercury, people like that. What is this generation? Mm. Who's their Bowie and Mercury going to be? I, um... I'm old, so I'm, I'm out of touch. Who, 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 who's who the, they, who's it going to be? Who would they be now? Probably um, a, a lot of like hip hop artists, I would say, like Kendrick Lamar, for example, like iconic name, uh, iconic music. In, in music, there, I suppose there's loads of people, but no, no one of that level. Yeah, but the thing is, but that's obviously there's a lot of people that won't be in the hip hop. No, of course, yeah. But, but um, you, you tell me, most people would like a David Bowie. Or a Freddie Mercury song, course, or a Queen yeah, song, or Prince. Yeah, but yeah. but and most people would like you know, Don't Stop Me Now, or mm. they'll or they'll like Starman, or you know, or yeah. you know, uh, Purple Rain, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But they're not all going to like the hip hop. No, they, they won't. They won't. That's what um, I mean. People that are sort of, of you know, every everyone likes a little bit of what is going to be there, or maybe they're just one off. So it doesn't happen. I think um, maybe maybe that's true. Maybe that's the what well, that's one of my favourite things for living at this time is that I was alive at the same time that David Bowie was alive. Yeah, you know, in the whole it, like the the universe. Is, has been around forever possibly yeah. literally forever and we were born in this into the same pocket of time where that was created yeah. that's pretty unbelievable yeah that's cool that's, that's cool that's Beatles cool. for example you know some of them are still alive yeah. some of them were murdered yeah which was a shame unfortunately Paul McCartney's still here but yeah. that's another story <laughs> swap that round annoying right <laughs> little, little owl man yes good guy though I suppose yeah uh, iconic but yeah I mean people around now people that I listen to like John Mayer, for example, who you've probably never heard of. No, it was an E Prime Minister player. after Margaret Thatcher. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah he done. He done all right. Nice grey hair. Yeah, nice pair of glasses. A lot of green peas in spitting image. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. that's it. Do you know that one? No, no, no. <laughs> keep laughing. <laughs> yeah, I will. It's nice to keep. I'm it doing going. myself in here. Yeah, well, as, long yeah. As, you, as long as you're having a good time. <laughs> so yeah, what um, what music have you been listening to? What 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 do you listen to oh, now? Do you know what it's like. I'm like officially so out of touch now and yeah. I listen to like you just all my old stuff, stuff you know yeah. I mean I listen to Erasure coming around here did you? Yeah. no way not because I'm just about to go off to a gay club afterwards but um, well, we which, which would be alright we can go down a hush What's but um, yeah we've got plenty of time no, I'm young darling but no I think I was watching BBC Three they're such good documentaries yeah, yeah. and they had a thing on there about uh, Simp Britannia the other night mm. and, and it was you know about Depeche Mode and mm. Yazoo which obviously Vince Clark was from around here in Depeche Mode mm. and then it was all about Erasure and stuff and you just want to pick up something and listen to it but I listen to like a lot of old stuff. I've been listening to Nevermind recently, the Mavano. I haven't listened to that for ages. It still sounds really good. Yeah. The Pixies, listening to that recently. And I mean, out of all the sort of like modernish bands, I oh, sound really old now. I think mm. the thing that I've really been quite into over the last few years is Foles. I love the Foles. Yeah, Foles are cool. Yeah, I saw them at, um, I see them at Latitude about six years ago. Wicked. And like, I'd sort of heard of them, but didn't know of them, but then knew the songs, like obviously listening to Radio 6 and mm. XFM and stuff. When they come on and like Spanish Sahara is just like such a cool tune. Yeah, and then watching them, 
watching them live is amazing. They just have so much energy and they, they must be so fit because for like an hour and a half, <laughs> they just don't stop. They don't have a break between songs. It's like really aggressive drumming on. and it doesn't stop. There's yeah. no like talking between songs. It's just like I love that. an hour and a half show. I love that when they don't talk. They just so play. Good. They so good. I really like Black Keys. I like, yeah, I like, Black Keys are cool. I like Black Keys, old stuff, thick freakness. It's yeah, they're cool. Like, Fucking brilliant! Just old school. I think the most disappointing fat band to see in, in uh, the last sort of ten years was the Kings of Leon. Really? One yeah. Of the most boring bands I've I ever think seen. That they were great. They're old shit. They're Again, old shit. I saw them when they were just their doing their old, old shit, and they're about halfway on the on yeah. the uh, list at V, and they were brilliant. Red, they were like Mo- Red Morning Light. Up. I yeah, like. I just they're old rocky stuff. The nuts. Yeah, but yeah. then when I started doing all this like Sex on Fire and all the, yeah, yeah. they did like I mean like I remember seeing them at V a few years ago and they're headlining and like. If I don't like something, I can still appreciate it if it's really good. Mm. And I've never been like a massive Stereophonics fan. Yeah. And I, they came on before. Mate, I think we might have been at the same V Festival. Oh, really? Fair, well, yeah. they, they came on. Did it rain? I think it did, yeah. yeah, yeah they yeah. came on before um, the Kings of Leon. And they were yeah. shit up the Stereophonics. Yeah, yeah. Like, so good live, so tight. His yeah. voice is like absolutely amazing. And yeah. I think I was thinking, like, you've got to really pull it out of the bag here, boys, when you yeah. come on the Kings of Leon. And yeah, they come right. on and they just done all their slow stuff. And it was like really boring. And I remember they went off. And like it was all going yeah. for like about five minutes before they did an encore, and, they oh come, and I thought, oh, they're going to really rock it now, and they just come on doing all their gospel shit. Do you That's know what sweet. I mean? It was like, what, the, do, do and the what? Pet Shop Boys were playing in the tent, and I was gutted because I should have gone to see them. And well, as I walked past, I could hear them going, "Where's Sting?" Girls and ding, ding, ding. And I'm thinking, like, oh, why did I not go in the tent? You know? <laughs> was that the same year that Faithless played as well? I think it was. Yeah, and they were, yeah. They're the nuts, like yeah, they're yeah, the nuts, yeah. Yeah. crazy. And yeah. Pe- Pendulum as well, and Prodigy. Yeah, I see the Chemical Brothers at V in the tent, and they were. Absolutely awesome. Wicked. Yeah. yeah. My mate got wanked off to that. Did he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Except those two looks. <laughs> but yeah, that yeah. is cr- What is it about, like you say, Kings at Leon, who I really loved Four Kicks and Red Morning Light yeah. and all that. I thought they were really, really cool. It was like the... You know, I used to play FIFA a lot and that was like the soundtrack to FIFA and I was like, yes, this is me. And then Sex on Fire come out and I... That is one of those songs that it just got rinsed out on radio. Yeah, it's and people, so commercial. It's like, oh, it, they've sold out. Yeah, but I thought... As you that, would do. You could have made some money yeah, out of it. Yeah, that's your job. But I think if that wasn't... You know, if that was like... I mean, this is like a stupid hypothetical thing, but if this was on like their old shit, it would probably... People would love it. It's yeah. just, I think because it's like played over and over, it turns... Sometimes if, pe- if things aren't David Bowie-esque, for example, and they get overplayed, they you sort of, the song gets found out a little bit from getting played over and over. Whereas if it was like a back catalogue or like a B-side, like out of something you, you know, from years ago, it wouldn't get slagged off. I think it'd be recognised yeah. a bit better. Yeah, yeah. Something about overplayed music. Yeah. And... Yeah, I can't believe you don't like The Office. But, um... Yeah, I just, I just always found it really cringy, but love yeah. Alan Partridge, but... I was like, but... So, not a big fan of The Office, never no. really got it. I'm a bit of a comedy snob. Mm. Liked a bit of extras because there's, you know, it was great seeing like famous people like Kate Winslet talking about masturbation dressed as a nun. <laughs> but I loved Derek yeah. because it was really poignant and I loved all the little flashbacks at the end of all the old people when they mm. were younger, full of life. And it was really, you know, really heart rendering stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. I really like that. His new series, Afterlife, um, you should watch that if you like Derek because it's similar in a similar vibe. Uh, really emotional um, but he's a journalist so okay. he, work, he works oh, okay. at like a local paper and he's go, he's like um, he's sort of assistant writer is this guy that was in extras actually I don't know if you remember the bit where he's queuing up for food and there's a pube in his dinner I don't no, know I remember can't remember but he's the guy yeah. that gives okay. he's, in, he's in loads of stuff okay. that guy um, so he's a recognisable guy a character he, actor yeah he, yes. he basically takes photos a guy go around um, go around the local community and take photos of like a like a bit of damp that's occurred on someone's wall, and it looks like Jesus. Like they, that's the kind of thing they're reporting on, okay. and they, it's funny. And then they get this apprentice girl. Basically, the guy, um, he, his his wife died. Uh, like Ricky Gervais's character's wife died, and it's all about him not giving a fuck basically about life anymore. And then it's sort of as it goes on, it's it's kind of predictable, I guess. But it's got a really good, really good message, and you, I think you'd like it because it's. Yeah, you know, no, it journalist. sounds good. But yeah, be interesting. And uh, yeah, but there, there's a guy. That, you know the character out of Derek. This is Kev. The, yeah, he said. Yeah, he, he's in it. Yeah, yeah. I love but it. Yeah. Talking about train spotters on um, on the old trimperzone.com. Yeah, um, he he's basically coming in the office going, hello. 
can you, uh, I've got a story for you. Like that. And he's like, they're like, well, what about? He's like, I just want to be in the local paper. Come round mine. And then they go round his house and it's fucking ridiculous the what happens. Yeah. You, yeah, you'll definitely like it. Especially because okay. you like train spotters. Yeah, I do like train spotters. Yeah. yeah, I've met a few train spotters in my time uh, when I was covering South End. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, so yeah, your fa- what's your favourite TV series of all time then? Well, obviously. As a as a kid, Doctor Who I used to love Doctor mm. Who because it just made me want to write. It just yeah. like fired up my imagination, and then obviously like Star Wars and stuff like that, films mm. wise. But my favourite film sit, but my favourite TV program of all time is Twin Peaks. I've not seen it. You've never seen Twin no, Peaks? I know, I know. I, t- I haven't seen much things. Twin Peaks is the TV show that created modern TV. Yeah, it was like it come on in the in the early nineties, and it was so groundbreaking and different from mm. anything that had been on. It's like a really, you obviously it's a it's a supernatural story. Yeah about a homecoming queen that's found wrapped up in plastic dead in a small town in the Pacific Northwest. Right. And it's like set around all these, you know, like people going to drink coffee in the diner and eating donuts and the FBI agent comes in to, to solve the crime and everything seems really wholesome on the top and, mm. and good small town loveliness. But below there's this like... Darkness. This cesspit of like affairs and yeah. murder yeah. and demonic spirits that are... Um, Taking over people's fathers and uh, having sex with their own children and murdering people. Watch Twin Peaks. And, uh, you know, and it's all... Amazing. Then, then it goes to the spiritual world where there's a lot of strobe lights and little dwarves dancing and... Uh, Hopefully that's what it's like, what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying, exactly. Yeah. That's what I want dwarves like, the, the Red dancing. Room. And, and just, honestly, it's the most Amazing. bizarre, surreal programme. Yeah. And if it wasn't for Twin Peaks, which a lot of the directors say, there'd be no... There wouldn't have been no Lost, there'd have been no mm. Mad Men, there'd have been no Breaking Bad. It was yeah, the, yeah. the TV show that broke the mould, because wow, it's yeah. really weird. Bra- yeah, Breaking Bad. Seen that? Do you know what? I got halfway through it and I got bored. Big commitment. Yeah, I just it got a bit samey. When I liked things it are long like that, it's hard. There's only so much like crystal meth you can see being made in a camper mm. van, you know? But I did, you know, I did is get that, into it. Pe- that... People tell me it gets better. Yeah, it definitely gets better. I think it grows. But the, the that was, was that an insight into your journey across America? There's only no, so much crystal not, meth. No, not really. I didn't see any crystal van. meth when I was in America. No, there wasn't that's, no. that's why I che- that's why you thought petrol was so cheap because you're all around selling that. The only thing that got made in my camper van was Angel of the Light, mate. There was oh, nothing like what that. Flavor? So, oh, butterscotch. Oh, mm. butterscotch. Yeah. But um, but no, yeah. I mean, and I am, and I, I'm disappointed when I do things like that because I am one that like does like to go through the whole thing. Like the I was thing really is, it's big commitment it's like a film it's like each episode's basically a film yeah but Twin it? Peaks is like the original one was like 28 episodes then you've got a prequel movie and it came back after 25 years last year and it was another 18 hour episodes that's crazy isn't so it so that's a lot to invest in as yeah. well and the thing is you sit there and watch it and you're like what the fuck have I just watched it doesn't make any sense right okay yeah yeah, yeah. Netflix um, is crazy yeah, yeah oh, but like, that's the thing, the age we live in where you can just rewind and watch yeah. stuff. And just and you get you, know, you get stuck in a hole of wanting to watch continuously the same thing. You yeah. get like a hunger or obsession. I watched, have you seen Bird Box? It's no, like, I've heard about that. That's it's quite good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, um, it's it's kind of simple, I guess. But yeah, it's good. So then I got, got in the like hole of what, watching things like that where humanity's going to die, basically. And then it takes you a lot to get out of that. What got me out of it is the Man City documentary that's on Amazon Oh, really? Prime. Okay. Have you seen that? No, I've it's, not, no. That's crazy. And also the Sunderland one. Oh, on, really? That'd on be Netflix. interesting. Oh, really? Okay. Sunderland one, you got to watch. you definitely love that because, you know, it's an insight. And, and it's our, into, our le- League One level, yeah, isn't it? Proper, so, yeah, proper yeah. football club. Yeah. I mean, huge football yeah, club, huge obviously, football club, but, yeah. but built on the fans, built on the community, yeah, what football should be, unlike Man City, who have just done it because of the money. But also, that is fucking brilliant, because it's an insight into, like, the elite. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Got, you've got to watch that, yeah. But what Netflix is so clever at, to get you hooked, get the binge watching, like, trigger that in you, is, like, when they, I really like it, they do it on, on a lot, where it'll be a scene, and it cuts to black, and then it go back. Right. And then and then when it cuts to black at the final time and it's the credits, it's like it makes you go, Oh, I need to yeah. watch some fucking next yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fle- I think Fleabag does that as well. Yeah, Fleabag, like I didn't even like see the first series till like about three months ago. My girlfriend Same. found it and I just watched the whole thing back to back, binged it, and it is the funniest thing I I've think. seen in years. I was like Same. shouting and crying with laughter. Yeah, yeah. So her little looks. Yeah, yeah. Her little looks off the camera are so her face. Her yeah. fa- see I think Again, back to Doctor Who, like, I don't think it's been controversial here, but I don't think it's been really good since they changed it to a woman this year. Right. My six-year-old was obsessed with it, and he's gone totally off it now, and Mm. he's got absolutely no understanding of sexism. But, and I'm not saying it's because it's a girl, Mm. I just think the girl that's playing her, Joe, playing, can't say him, playing the Doctor, (laughs) is just not quirky enough. You've got to be a bit 
quirky. And the girl that does Fleabag is would have been an amazing female She'd Doctor be a great Who because Doctor she's eccentric. Who. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, hundred percent. Did you see the other you thing know, she wrote, Killing Eve? No, but I've heard that's about amazing that. as yeah, well. Yeah, that's yeah. really amazing. Do you know I'm gonna upset you here? I'm not a fan of Doctor Who. Yeah, but it's probably your generation. It I wasn't think, on. Yeah, it think, was off the telly for a long time. I think it's because I sort of maybe I was introduced to something that might be considered sort of higher quality. Don't production. say Star Trek. I don't like don't sci-fi say Star in Trek. general, but I mean, like the, the way. <laughs> don't say Star Trek. Yeah. The way things are made, um, and then you watch something amazing. I haven't got an example, but I watched something really well produced. Not saying Doctor Who's not well produced, but then you go back to that, and it's kind of like oh, I can't get on with the little little worm man in a fucking cardboard box or whatever of the evil Doctor Who character would be. Yeah, but, I know what you, you mean. Know, it's like um, it's like maybe it's not real enough. I don't yeah. know. I like my it's for kids, isn't it? It is for yeah, kids. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It is for kids. Yeah. It is for kids, mate. I yeah, Doctor Who, Star Trek, Star Wars. Not a fan, man. No, really. No, oh, you got no. Okay, no, mate. I'm, no, I'm so a different, different universe to you, then, son. Well, I is... don't like Star Trek. Please don't mention that anymore. I don't no, like Star no, Trek. No, I tell you what, I'm loving at the moment. Um, is have you been? Do you like crime stuff? I do. Yeah. Are you watching Baptiste? No. That is really good. It's on BBC One at the moment. That's really, really good. Have you seen the Ted Bundy tapes on Netflix? No, but I was told to Insanity. watch that. It's meant to be really, really good. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, there's loads of like, then, have you seen You? That's like a, about a guy that becomes obsessed with this girl and stalks her, basically. And then there's another one called Seen it, I was Dirty, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dirty John, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah, that's similar as well. Fucking mental. I love crime stuff. There was a really good one on about the West the other week. Mm. That was really good. That was really... I mean, it's, it's bad to watch it. It was interesting. But I'll tell you what I couldn't get on with. Uh, did you watch the Neverland stuff? Leave the Neverland. I haven't watched it. Really hard going. Mm, yeah. like, I watched it. The Michael Jackson yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, really bizarre. Like, I watched about the first 45 minutes of it and it's like got the guys... Again, we talk about coincidence, how mm. these guys actually got to meet him in the first place and they were sort of kids. Yeah. But they're still talking about him like they love him. I know. like they're... It's really weird. And then the mum, who's let, you know, the, you know, the things they let happen, like letting him stay in the room with them and yeah. like they're on a different floor to the hotel to Michael Jackson in the room with their son, like eight, nine, What's ten year old son. There? They're laughing about it on the yeah. camera and it's like, I can't take it seriously. No. And they're getting some very graphic data about what went on. Yeah, it's, yeah. It was really hard going out to give up on that. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I haven't watched that. I probably won't. I remember being at the mirror the night he died, Jimmy Savile, and everyone was just like, all right, how long before the per- first pedo story comes out? Yeah, yeah. Everybody knew. Everybody knew. Everybody yeah. knew. Yeah. Giving a key to the. But to again, the living in a different time where there wasn't social media, where, no. where a picture couldn't be taken of him in his camper van outside some home for like fostered. So sort of for orphan girls that were like trouble, you know, yeah, where he was going in and preying on them when yeah. they're obviously, you know, vulnerable, vulnerable girls. Yeah. Today, someone would be like, oh, there's Jimmy Savile in there, take, take a picture, picture of that, like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, so like, they, they, they had like a camouflage, didn't they then? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Like, yeah, like a camouflage because nobody could find out about it. No. It's like... Um, like Rolf Harris, yeah. Oh, it's mate, like, that was the one that destroyed wait, me the most. Yeah, you're not. Think, Ra- I was like, not Rolf. Please, not Rolf. Please, not Rolf. Please, not Rolf. Please not Rolf. I've got, could, I've got Rolf Harris albums at home, mate. Have you? Yeah, and all, and I've, it, like it's part of people's childhoods. Still and stuff hurts, like mate. That. It's weird, isn't it? But then, then you know, you get, you get convicted of what he done, get exposed, and then you go and wave at a small child in the playground. Come on, mate! Don't do don't do that. No. You know, you know. It's so, but it just shows like there's so many wolves in sheep clothing, isn't there? That's true. That's true. It's and the true. fact that they've like built a career and like used it to like, and it's so weird. Now you look back at like an old like seventies episode of Jim of uh, Top of the Pops mm. and Jimmy Savile. Look, let's be honest, he wasn't exactly a uh, Brad Pitt, was he? Well, everyone fuck it. You should have known his pedo from what he just looked like. And he's got his arm. Yeah, yeah. Around like some bird's ass, or like his hand under a tit, or you know, it's obvious when you watch it now. <laughs> I know. Isn't it? But, but 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 as they say. Different times, different though. Time. Yeah. It was the right to yeah, be a Different pedo, times, yeah. Yeah, it's oh, fine. Fuck, it's yeah. ridiculous, unbelievable. mate. Different, unbelievable. Like, Corruption. Yeah. Yeah. Corruption yeah. at its highest. Totally. Power mate. controlling. Yeah. That is unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, look at oh, that. posh, isn't it? Is it? It's just a glass of water. Just a glass of water. I'm feeling a bit like Alan Part- the new Alan Partridge. Have you seen <laughs> oh, that? Mate, it's yeah. unbelievable. Water! I need water! I need water! I need my water! Ma- my mouth is dry! <laughs> So my good. mouth is dry. My mouth is dry. <laughs> Where's my fucking water, Lynn? Have you seen, <laughs> have you seen the Have you seen them all up to date? The four yeah, films. Yeah, I haven't. Like. Yeah, I've seen it, everything apart from the stuff he did on Sky Atlantic. He did a little series, right, and I'm yeah. not seen Alpha Papa yet. Well, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a bit more sort of silly. Like, right. Okay. But the third episode of the new thing. I've seen all the new oh, ones. Oh mate, yeah. the, when, when he's got the it's the CGI on his on the little oh the small, kid's face. Mate, I know. How good was I, that? I, I, 
I thought that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen, but I didn't laugh. I just mate, it's creepier than the I was like open mouth. Yeah, there. it was it's great. It's fucking yeah. unreal. Yeah. And then the bit that really cracked me up is when he had the slipper and he was doing an example of how to beat a child. Yeah, and that just was great. But some people don't get it. No, no. But the th- do you know the thing about that is that. Because I love The Office and I love Ricky Gervais. And that is, sorry, but that is, I can't stand The Office. It makes me cringe. Really? And obviously Alan Partridge is cringe. Yeah, yeah. But I, I can't stand you don't Ricky like Gervais. And like, wow. I, the Office never never done nothing for me. Yeah, right. All. But the, the, the point I was going to make about that is that it, that's, The Office is probably one of my favourite things ever made. Um, but he tried to bring the character back in a film. And I thought, like a David Brent film, Life on the Road, where he could, oh, yeah, yeah, I saw no, that. wanted to be, yeah. be in a band and all yeah. that. Uh, which is still funny if you like it, but it's nowhere near, I don't think it's nowhere near as credible as what Steve Coogan can do. Well, with I think Alan Partridge, Partridge is genius. And I think the genius thing about it is, is that he's changed it every time. Yeah, right. And it's and somehow, he time away and then he brings it back and the character but seems to have been format. developed. Yeah. Like he's better at Alan Partridge than he used to be. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've, so, you know, he was the... Sports reporter on Brass Eye. Yeah. Then he did the radio show of his mm. shows. Then he did Knowing Me, Knowing You, and he had his own chat show, which yeah. fucked me. It was my favourite, most comedy thing ever is when he does the Abba Medley with the girl. Have you seen that? <laughs> no, I haven't seen it. It's I haven't so seen funny. You've got to see that. Go on YouTube. Yeah. Partridge Abba Medley, mate. Yeah. It's the most funniest <laughs> thing ever. Like, he's just like shouting Abba songs into this woman's face. <laughs> but, and then obviously, then he was living in the in the, uh, in the the travel lodge. Yes, then oh, he, mate. Then he had the caravan with the great fake bass yeah. playing, didn't he? When yeah. he put it down with the woman coming. And then obviously, where we are now. Yeah, and, and it's very, it's pretty incredible. He's, He's a, he's a great actor, though. Oh, mate, he's, he's a great yeah, actor. I saw the Stan and Ollie film recently. I haven't seen that yet, but that I, I'm going to see absolutely that. absolutely yeah. amazing. And I think for him, I see a few interviews, and he obviously was a massive fan. Massive fan yeah. So to do that... To get to play The it, pressure. Yeah, big, oh, mate, yeah. but they together, it was like so good. And it was really weird because, again, you know, this is a, we- a weird thing, talking about that Adrian again. But um, <laughs> as a kid, Channel 4 was a revolution. Yeah. We had three channels, one BBC One, Two, and mm. ITV, yeah? And like... Um, you know, long before people were having duck lips and, um, you know, like spider eyelashes was, yeah. was, was, a, was a program. A yeah. fake tan, you know, in different <laughs> counties around the country with women that have obviously got too much time on their hands. But um, we, were, we, we like, so, you know, I'm talking like the, the early 80s. Yeah. Kids were brought up watching Lauren Hardy. Right, yeah. On BBC Two. Harold Lloyd, which was like a, which was still a quiet, yeah. you know, black and white, you know, some bloke like running silent along movie. girders in New York. <laughs> yeah, it was a silent yeah. movie. Yeah. And when I watched that Stan Ollie film, they were doing some of the, the sketches from the, the things I watched as kids. Crazy. And it's like, this is what I watched as a wow, kid. Yeah. It's really weird then to think that they, they were made like, made in the thir- about... 1930s. Yeah, and that's yeah. what I watched in the 1980s as a kid. Yeah, right. That's crazy because they just would bring that back, I suppose. I mean, that that kind of thing, that kind of comedy, I suppose it's timeless. But you couldn't, like, you know, in 40 years, they'll bring Towie back and it'll be like, what the fuck's this? No, and yeah. it is timeless. It yeah, really yeah. is timeless. And it is still funny now. And I'm yeah. still laughing. But to be honest, I had a bit of a tear in the eye in the cinema because it's yeah. quite nostalgic. Yeah, right. So it reminded you of, you know, your childhood, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was it was, it was Laura Nardi, Harold Lloyd, or Monkey. You know, they, they, they were the three. <laughs> Things. I haven't even heard of Monkey. You've never seen Monkey? No, what's oh, Monkey? Mate, Monkey? You've never seen Monkey? <laughs> you need to get on YouTube. Monkey, mate. I'm, I'm too monkey busy magic. on a, a different type of tube, oh, no. yeah. Yeah. The, the, the naughty tube. Yeah. Right, okay. Anyway. Um, what was I going to say? I'm, I'm, trying to yeah. st- I'm trying to stop the thing of all this stuff on porn tube I'm clicking through now. Yeah. No, it's porn Hub, isn't it? Yeah, porn Hub, porn Yeah, red tube. Anyway. That's actually um, this podcast is sponsored by. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh, ePorner.com. Oh, good. Maybe that'll be, uh, they'll get me some uh, free ones and thin ones you've got to pay more for now. No stress podcast sponsored by having a wank. Love it. Nice. Like it. <laughs> yeah, having, so monkey. What the fuck monkey, is monkey? Monkey is like this heavily dubbed... Right, uh, Chinese soap opera about a monkey god that looks like a, he's got like a Boy Scout. All right, a priest called Trippy Tarka that rides a horse that's meant to be a bloke, but it's actually a really pretty bald headed girl. <laughs> a monk called Sandy who comes out the sea with skulls and crossbones around his neck. Wow, and uh, another one called Pigsy who's like a human pig. <laughs> if he eats pork, he changes into a pig, and he's always trying to pull birds and pinch their asses. Is he a monkey? Best, thing, and they're they're on this they're on this mission, mate. They're on this mission fighting mm. demons, yeah, and it, obviously. It's, it's real life right. then. It's, re- it's based on a book called The Journey to the West and they're right. trying to deliver these scrolls to someone. Never got to the end of it because there's, there's thousands of them. <laughs> but the thing is about Monkey, talking back to Donald Trump's head, the thing mm. is with Monkey, he has his finger where he goes, he gets his fingers to his lips and he goes, <laughs> like that. And then a big cloud light comes up in the sky oh, right. and he drives about in it. And then the, no. the music starts, the music, mate. The is music. It? So, and he fights people with the staff and all this and... 
He's got this re- really weird like band thing around his head that if he's naughty, the the, uh, <laughs> the bloke that's a priest that's really a a woman does a little bit of magic and he goes and he like changes him into a wasp and he can't do stuff mate you've got to watch it you've got to watch it you've got to watch it for the theme tune the theme tune is like one of the best theme tunes what is it is it a well known thing or is it like specific for the thing no it's it's own thing mate it's it's just brilliant I'm not going to sing it for you but it's it's, it's very good mate I wasn't going to ask but now I feel like mate you need to watch I definitely will it it sounds like it came out of my head mate a priest that's actually an attractive woman oh yeah if you like bald headed birds yeah 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 you know a bit like an early Shinoda O'Connor before she went nuts. Okay, yeah. nice. Yeah. Or Britney when she did go nuts. Yes, indeed, yeah. Bald women. Bald women. We've done that, covered that. Done that, it's another topic. It is. Another one crossed yeah, off. Yeah. Hold on. Um, yeah. I've lost my pen, otherwise I would have crossed it out. Yeah. Is it Czech Republic tonight, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. I'm not really bothered about England. No, nah, me neither. Fair. No. I find it, I've, well, I find it easier to watch England since Southgate's taken, taken charge. Yeah, but friendlies and all that. I know it's, well, it's, it's a qualifier yeah, it's tonight, qualifier. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Nation League and all that, I think it's probably a good idea. Yeah, it's better than just fucking playing friendlies, isn't it? What about, that's one thing I was going to ask. The way um, uh, Sam Allardyce got torn about, apart by the media, what do you what do you think about that? Well, he got what he deserved, didn't he? Yeah, he got what he deserved, but do you not think, do you, is it really that bad? What, that he's a greedy fucker? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? At the end of the day, right, if you're in that position, you're like really caught between the devil and the deep blue yeah. sea, aren't you? Because... That's the thing, isn't it? It's always funny with people, isn't it? The more money people have got, mm. they still want more, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. They're greedy. I mean, he, he doesn't need that money. Just be England manager. He he does, yeah, like, but that's what I'm saying. So yeah. you, you get all the, oh, yeah, I've always wanted to, you know, I'm so proud of my country. You know, I mean, he was like Harry Bassett, football manager, wasn't yeah, he? But, yeah. but like, like a cartoon character. But like, he wanted, he, you know, all the, I want to be England manager. He's like my dream job and all that. So then why, this is what I don't get. They, he's an experienced bloke. He's been around the block for decades. Mm. He knows what's going on. How naive was he to sit in that I bar know. and be put in that situation knowing what goes on? I know. And, you know, you think and someone like Aladis runs a tight ship, do you know what I mean? So and, and he's and he's pr- he must know what it's like. like Why would you put course. yourself in that position? He's, he had a few wines, he felt like the geezer, didn't he? Yeah, that's but it. Why does he need to show... But yeah, so it's like a that. bloke that's had a few beers and wants to show off. Yeah, but basically. it cost him big time, didn't it? I know. And I, but I, what I, 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 I was disappointed when they... When they took his job away because I thought it was, a, it was a snaky thing it was a set up well it's a honey trap isn't it but like I don't that. get me wrong it ain't a nice way of doing things no. but, but I just think yeah, it's a really bad way of doing things but like but in hindsight it's like no you, you shouldn't put yourself in that yeah, situation so exactly. you should have known better yeah yeah he should know better I mean god he must have felt he must have been in a dark well, place well his whole world just ended didn't it yeah, but then he still got another job at Everton didn't yeah, he yeah of course yeah and everyone he'll, no will, he'll still get a job yeah, he'll still get a payday as soon as someone's in the shit they They'll give him a Sam, call because he's, he's missed to stay up, and yeah, so, that's you know, it. And that's the sad thing about it. You're right. You might not like his football or the way he plays, but he goes in. He's a troubleshooter. Mm. I mean, all them years we're talking about. You're talking about the Sunderland um, mm. documentary. Uh, documentary. You know, they were in free fall for years, just staying up in the Premier League. And when he went in there, it's probably the lowest, and he kept them up. Yeah, you know, yeah, he true. does. A, he does that job. He does. He? So yeah. he will get a call. And I, I was just, I, I felt gutted for him, but then I was like, you deserve, you, yeah, you, know, you deserved, you deserved it. All it. You were a fucking yeah. greedy fucker. Yeah, You've just, got more money than we could all ever dream of and you still want more. And like the ultimate job in football, I guess. Yeah. Well, not really. I don't know. I don't know. I think so. there's yeah, better jobs. him at his age. He's not a young man anymore. Just, you know, meeting up every few months, going to watch a few games and that. And getting true. paid millions of pounds. That's wouldn't true. be too bad, would it? That's it. I mean, yeah. one, one thing I was, else I was going to uh, say about football before we come to a end is that the conference seems more attractive to me now than League Two does. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's like more... Um, more poetry in it it's like it's just more uh, you know the the teams in it there's some sort of marketing's directed at the conference more so than league two it's like you're, league two's saying, a dead zone you want a, you want a little away day to solly hole more exactly yeah yeah, yeah. like how interesting I mean how interesting would it be like to go I mean I don't ever want us to be in the conference hopefully not or the national league whatever yeah. it's called now but there's, yeah, it's, it's like you say, there's a lot of deadwood, isn't there? But yeah. obviously they've tried to do that by doing two up, two down now. Yeah. But, you know, you look at the teams that have come up, Macclesfield this year, I mean, they've absolutely struggled, haven't they? Yeah. It's they sh- like they're going straight back down again. But then, and then what's happening at clubs like Notts County? Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. You know, it's a famous crazy. old club, they're going to go out of the league. But That's there's, true. But there's a lot, there's always been, I think, 
more money washing around in the conference. Yeah, because people were like waiting then for league that. Then League Two, because people come in by clubs and they want to get them up the pyramid. Because they've seen it can be done. I mean, yeah. look at Burton. I know, I know. Look it, at Yeovil. Yeah, I mean, they're going, but they were up to the championship. Champ- yeah, and their clubs have got no right to be there. No, that's true. So and people can get these clubs cheaper and get them up. That's it. And then they hope they can do what Uncle Ron's hoping we do, by develop a new ground, make money yeah. off it. You know, that's and what people be a vanity do. project. Yeah, well, definitely, yeah. Well, also... I don't know if it's a vanity project, but like Forest Green Rovers, yeah, like that that guy, like vegan and yeah, but that's a great, that's a good little story there, isn't yeah, it? Like really they are, cool. they've got like it's all like eco friendly, isn't it? Even mm. the, the new stadium is eco friendly, made out of wood yeah. or yeah, biodegradable material, and it's material. got like you know solar panels everywhere. Yeah, they amazing. only do vegan food. Apparently, the player, which I don't know how that works, but apparently the players only have a vegan diet. Yeah, some some of them uh, because Sean Mikowski, who played for Southend, has gone went there. He must have yeah. gone away and had a cheeky beef burger somewhere. Yeah. He, must have, <laughs> yeah. he must have done. Yeah, he just he sne- must, sneak off to McDonald's. Yeah, he did, definitely did didn't yeah, they without yeah. a doubt but, like, but how amazing that they're doing it. and, and they, they were like whipping boys in the conference for years yeah definitely got up and now they're looking like they could come up again they I mean, might that'd be, a, that'd be a great away trip wouldn't it that would be I'll go yeah, that's, def- have to that's go. a definite one we'll yeah, go yeah. we'll go uh, yeah just yeah so they go there I don't know if they turn vegan straight away but then there's like Chris Smalling is vegan I think and oh, he's, got, he? he's got Man United eating vegan a couple times a week or once a week or whatever oh, it is right, okay. pretty unbelievable amazing. is that why he's uh, copied Jason Lee's haircut is it yeah it is also yeah. Jermaine Defoe he's a, he's a vegan you know, look at him he's still scoring goals exactly. at Rangers isn't he yeah. so Tell us about yourself then, for people that don't know, because I know, and people will know, but others won't, so it's good to say who you are. What's your name? Stop with that. My name is Bernie Friend. What a great name. And uh, what, what I describe myself as... Um, double D. Yep, um, Double D, yes. Um, um, local journalist and author, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. What kind of things have you been authoring? Well, the, the last book that I wrote mm. was, the, uh, was a book about... Um, my my footballing hero as a child, which I'm sure many people will have, will have read, is yeah. uh, Red Card Roy about um, Southend's uh, probably greatest ever character and probably one of the greatest in the English game, Roy McDonough, who holds the English record for red cards. Most red cards in his career? In anyone's career, in, mm. in these aisles, 22. And obviously just as famous for drinking that amount of beers the night before a game and probably pulling that many birds in a weekend. Yeah, and that's something to be proud of. If South, if playing for South and United isn't, yeah. that one is. And unfortunately, never got 22 goals in a season for us, though, so there wasn't the uh, Connect Four symmetry there. No, that's a shame. So, yeah. you know, he's not that much of a hero if he's fucking it up with that. Uh, I wouldn't tell him, though. I wouldn't tell him, but he was just... Um, he's your hero. He was my hero because he was just... He was like... When you was a kid, I mean, I was like watching him, I suppose, from about the age of 15, and football yeah. was different then. And it was you yeah. could have a big scrap. I mean... I take my boy to Roots All now and I can't handle all this, them coming out, shaking each other's hands like that. the Champions League at the start. I hate that. It's not like they want to fight each other. They're all saying hello. I know. Um, and maybe it's being older and nostalgia and all that, but I just football to me now is like a non-contact sport. Yeah, right. When you watch South End now, sometimes it's like when I used to cover Blues for the Echo mm. and I'd have to cover the reserve games when we used to have a reserve team playing at Roots All. And it was like that sort of weaker version of the real deal. It's like yeah. a, pretty, a bit like an exhibition match, and it's like watching it now. No one tackles. Yeah, a bit like a friendly version of what it used yeah. to be. Yeah. Like. Whereas when I was, you know, again, you're talking about age, but when I, you know, when I grew up, I'd expect every game there'd be some thunderous tackles. Yeah. There'd be at least one like twenty man brawl in the centre circle <laughs> yeah. where the referee would just step back for five, then like show one yellow card, maybe two. Yeah. Right. It's you crazy. Know, yeah. These days, you know, you, you get sent off for for uh, you know for, for 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 breathing on someone, don't you? But standard um, better now. I don't think so. I don't look. Maybe it's just being an old git, but I don't, I don't think so. No, I, I think it's a easier game now than it was then. People say about oh, it's quicker and all mm. this sort of thing, but I, they they were tough, tough times tough in those days. Yeah, and I look at someone like you know again who was another one of my heroes. Roy played up front with David Crown, yeah. who scored like a goal every other game mm. in mainly crap teams at Southend, apart from one season when we got promoted. Then mm. he went at the end of the season. Then we signed uh, Brett Angel. Mm. How he only ever played in the bottom two divisions. I think now in, in the championship or something, he gets shitloads. Do you or, think? Do you think that he didn't move just because he enjoyed it? Just a good life. I don't know. I, don't, I think. I mean, I know Crowney, and I just don't think the opportunity ever came. Didn't come. If it did now, now though, he'd yeah, be off. of course you would. But even like Premier League clubs now, you know, you look at a Cardiff or someone like that. Yeah. They'd have taken a gamble on someone like him. Yeah, hundred you know, percent. Twenty-five, twenty-six. You know, struggling. You know, ten goals a season. You know, for like a young, for a younger South End fan, how do they compare to like a Freddie Eastwood? or uh, Barry Kaur, for example. Barry Kaur is quite <clears throat> a, a similar type of player. but To Roy? Yeah, but like a bit hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Stand up to people. I don't think he was anywhere in the same No, no, uh, but, same, but similar, but, Roy. similar but, but a different game. He didn't need yeah, to be yeah. that physical. Roy would, wouldn't, I think Roy always says, 
people say, how would you get on today? You'd, you'd, you'd like absolutely, you'd terrify defenders now, you know, because yeah, yeah. they're all like, let's be honest, I think I did a piece of him in, in the Echo recently and he was saying about, you know, footballers now, they, they all want, um, it's all towy. They all want to yeah. look like Burton's models. Yeah, you know right. I mean? They're worried about their hair being out of place and stuff. You know? Maybe they're thinking about their career after football yeah. a bit more without, yeah. you know, not really appreciating football. That, you know, that's... They were all warriors in them teams them days. So, yeah. so Barry was obviously a strong player and he was, he was, um, yeah. he was similar to Roy in the target man role. Probably a better goal scorer, a better goal scorer than Roy, to be mm. honest. Yeah, mm. much better goal scorer. But he didn't need to be as physical because no. it's a different game. But those teams in those days, you, it was all like, you know, it was just like World War Three. Yeah. A lot of warriors, you know. Well, that, that's what I hate about the game. Um, if there's a foul made or something, they'll help each other up, check it. I just think, oh, please. That wouldn't have happened. I don't want to, I don't want to see that. I, that annoys me. If yeah. one of our, if South, one of a South End player helps someone up after they've just sort of put a foot, foot in a little bit, I'm like, please leave him on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm not being funny, you know, like the, 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 the um, atmosphere at Roots Hall can be so flat sometimes, yeah, it can't can. it? You know, and I'm not being funny, a crunching tackle, mm. that gets the crowd going. It does, it does. And more, maybe more so than a nice bit of play. Yeah, I a think nice it does, because it G's of... everybody up and gets everyone like, come on! Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it, mm. it G's everyone up. And that side of the game's gone, gone, and I think it's poorer for it. Yeah, I do. I think so. You can still put in a challenge, but nowhere near in the same way. I mean, I, I, I'm fortunate enough not to be... Old enough to remember those times, right? Okay, you? well I am, so, unfortunately. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but yeah, no, that, that's one. In you'd say that that has affected the game negatively. That yeah, makes I it think ne- so. Not as fun to watch. And I'm not talking about like you know breaking people's legs and no. scissor kicks. Just a full blooded fifty fifty challenge. Well, and not a lot even... of the time that free. I mean, I think so. Let's talk in modern day football. Yeah. I'm trying to think of who it was. Um, I think it was, yeah, Eric Dyer. Yeah, okay. When he tackled Sergio Ramos. Yeah, when he yeah, played yeah. Spain, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, that recently. Was, that was old school. But that was just, a, it was a tackle. Yeah, yeah. There was nothing wrong with that. No. Did he, he got booked for that as well, didn't he? I think he? so, yeah. Just it was being just being a tackle. 50-50, mm. yeah. ball's there to be won. He's not following through. He's not sticking his studs into his groin. No. Down his leg. 50-50 mm. tackle. The ball's won. And what really, you know, the Eptimise the modern day footballer in that game, Ramos. Yeah, yeah. Supposed hard man. Yeah, yeah. Just rolling about. Yeah, but like but and like looking for the card. It's I like, hate. Looking it's for embarrassing. The cards. Yeah. It's embarrassing. I hate looking for the card, but I will do that if I'm watching on the side. But it's different. I'm not playing. Yeah. But like, uh, yeah, Ramos. I mean, he's not hurt there. He's just trying to get the trying to get in book, trying to gain the advantage. I suppose he's not actually hurt, but uh, he's meant to be an hard man. Yeah. I actually, I used to hate him. I used to hate him so much. But then I think he was playing. It was Madrid, uh, Bayern Munich. I think it was Champions League final, and he scored two. I don't yeah. know if you remember that. Yeah, he was and, a great player. And after that, I was like, I love you now. Yeah, he's a great Because I hate Neuer. I hate, yeah. I hate uh, Ger- the German keeper. Absolute knobhead. And I, just... I, and I think the other thing with all of that is as well, I think the other thing that's missing is maybe a bit of respect right. now. For each other. Yeah, and players the fact player. that, you know, and the fact they'd want to test themselves yeah. against, you know, who's the strongest and yeah. stuff like that, you know. And maybe now... It's maybe gone a bit more. Whereas, like, how can we stitch the other player up? Yeah, well, it's a, just, rather than test, you know, win the physical battle in or whatever, a fair you know? way. Yeah, fair now, way, now, yeah. now, because I mean, it's sort of the referee's fault or the laws of the game's fault. They allow these uh, little trying to gain an advantage. They've allowed that into the game, and it dominates the game. Yeah, it dominates the game. Like, uh, you know, that's not always a negative thing. Like Southend, when we played Gillingham, uh, the ball went over the line. Nathan Bishop picked it up, lobbed it out, and we go and score up the other end. I yeah. mean, we gained an advantage there. That's technically cheating I suppose but you know what's the difference between that and someone diving in the box yeah you know? yeah yeah but yeah. you know what again maybe again obviously being older than you again mm. we're, it's gonna be a running theme isn't it um, <laughs> we look the same age yeah <laughs> yeah thanks mate cheers you've had hard life but um, <laughs> but, um I just oh, I don't like VAR no I don't like goal line technology I just think that part of it is, and, and obviously I th- I'm a great believer that in, yeah. in a football season things even themselves out yeah and obviously it can be Swings frustrating, and but that makes the game, the controversy, the, was yeah. it or wasn't it? You yeah, know, yeah. That, that is what makes the game of football. And the VAR 100%. in the World Cup was That's ridiculous. Laughable. Yeah, yeah I, guess, I guess they have to start somewhere, but I can't believe they actually started at the biggest footballing competition there is. Yeah. I mean, why would you start starting the League Cup, for example? Yeah. Which, you know, oh, but, but, then, but then look the other day, the farce of it as well, the, the FA yeah. Cup quarterfinals yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. last week. Whereas uh, Millwall... 
and I can't remember the other two. Brighton. Was it Brighton? Didn't have VAR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas the other two games did have VAR. Doesn't How can sense. you not have them all the same? You, you either do it properly or don't do it I at th- all. I think so. I mean, I think, uh, yeah, you got. that's why they've got to choose it, choose like a, a League Cup or even the FA Cup, but FA Cups are there. But maybe last stages, I don't know, make it fair to, but then you're, there's such a gap between the divisions already. Yeah. So just putting v, VAR in, I mean, it gives us, gives teams like us no, fucking chance no, really. it's just, um, I, I could see that the Premier League could just have it um, yeah. but I just think oh, even then it just makes me piss, pisses me off even when we, we're playing in the Johnson Paint Trophy or Checker Trade Trophy whatever it's called now or it used to be the LDV I just call it the, the LDV the Sherpa Vans Trophy yeah the LDV or yeah. the JPT or whatever yeah. it's called um, they've, they've entered Premier League Teams, oh, the other teams yeah. and I just think why don't you fuck off and yeah. leave us alone yeah. stop trying to give us this fucking shit apparently we get more money because of it but I don't care about that it's our chance to play at Wembley yeah. give us a fucking chance totally agree and like I don't I didn't go I, didn't, I, I think I can't remember who we played I just can't be asked. I just I'm not going to go and watch Brighton under 23s no like, why would I want to do that I'd just rather literally sit at home but it's but the, the, the great thing about it is is uh, so far, correct me if I'm wrong. None of them have got anywhere near the That's final. That's true. Yeah. What yeah. if they do? What if two under twenty threes get in the final? I what think, would happen? Well, yeah. And that, so what are they going to do? Play the first teams then? But, yeah. Well, they wouldn't be allowed to, I no, suppose. Yeah. But I just think like it's disrespectful. I think so. Because not one, it's like you know, you. I, I remember like the night we beat Orient in that second leg yeah. home and got to Wembley for the first. Was it? That was the first ever time, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Ben Reeves. Yeah. And like goal. and like. Um, the scenes on the pitch, and to be fair, they absolutely pissed all over us that night. Yeah. And and um, the scenes and the emotion and everyone on the pitch. And then I mean, we went to Wembley. What did we take like thirty four thousand something like that. And crew, yeah. crew took about nine. Yeah, yeah. So you knew we were going to lose yeah, all day yeah, long. Yeah. Always works like that, doesn't it? But, Might as well have gone home. But like, you know, how can how can you rob? Smaller teams of that. I know of that, that of that opportunity. It's very it's arrogant. A, it's disrespectful. I think, I think so. We don't need that. And then you got Pep Guardiola giving it. You know, it helps. The, I don't care about. The, Fucking yeah, but they come career. from a they come from a mentality where they have their second teams yeah. playing their second but, division. Yeah, Barca B, Barca B, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I don't know if I would. What would I feel? What would you feel about that if they had a, a Man City B or no, Arsenal B? No, no, doesn't work. Doesn't, doesn't work. work. No. But it's something about Spanish football that allows that. I suppose it's romantic. Barca B is like kind of yeah, something they, romantic. So, so they're not allowed to draw each other in the cups. I have no idea. No. I don't actually know. There's the a few of them that do, isn't there? But yeah, it's yeah. just no, not for me. But that. our game is is you know our game is completely different to all the places you mean, you look yeah. at you know you look at clubs in spain and italy and everywhere else germany they don't have like mm. a third division like we have no no they don't there's no they don't have the the football culture that we have yeah that we we made ourselves i suppose from standing in the terraces in the 60s and well, that. F- well firstly about 30% of the teams in the third division now seem to be fucked up sides from the Premier League. They've lost their parachute payments. <laughs> yeah. you know, there's an hole in their parachute and they're falling all the way through. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and they're crashing yeah, down. Yeah, but that's happening a lot, isn't it? You know, you've know, got Leeds, Forest, Sheffield Wednesday, you know, yeah. now Sunderland. You know, Sunderland getting like 45,000 at home, you know, yeah. Portsmouth. I know. All these teams, you know, that have had financial difficulties because they've chased the money yeah. or they've had Area Redknapp as manager. <laughs> and, um, you know, Southampton, again, another one, you know, it's yeah. happened. They've just tried. They've sort of tried, yeah, tried to get back, and it hasn't worked. But the crowds, the crowds of, of clubs supporting their local team, the yeah. crowds, you know, and I think when you look every year, the Championship is like the second highest supported league in Europe. Unbelievable! That's the Premier League, then the Championship, then it's I think it's La Liga or, mm. or, the, or the Bundesliga. I'm not sure which one yeah. it is, but they're all they're both above Serie A, and yeah. I don't think Serie A is that far ahead of League One when you've got the Sunderlands and no. the. Portsmouth and teams like that in there, you know, yeah, it's that, amazing support. That is true. It's and not also, the same. No, it's not the same. It's not really the same sport, really. I mean, I mean, it is, but you know what I mean. That I think in Spain and stuff, they don't eat, they don't really travel away. Like, no. it, like the, you know, it'd be Real Madrid, Barca. There'd be about hundred Barca fans yeah. sat there. So we're like going to watch a baseball match or yeah, something. Yeah, it's so weird. Isn't yeah. it? I don't get that. I no. saw this thing on. Um, you're a South and United fan only, or do you suppose? Well, so I'm a South End fan, but my family, like my dad, used to support Arsenal. But, yeah. I, I, but do you know what? I, I'm not. No, I'm not interested. It's just South End. No, yeah, yeah. I'm not interested. The because uh, did you used to report on West Ham a little bit? No, never. No, never I've never, never committed that blasphemy no, in my no, life. I don't think so. No, I've yeah. never. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, dare you. I mean, I remember, this is over. I remember, maybe it's because West Ham used to have a little fucking feature in the Echo. Which no, I and you know what? That's always been a bugbear with yeah. Southend fans, so I would never touch no, it. No, I didn't. Just like to point out at this stage, you are wearing a uh, Claret, Claret t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, this is sort of in homage to one of our old away shirts. Oh, okay, okay. Right, okay. <laughs> I thought you were a Closet Burnley fan. But, um, but yeah. no, that's always been a big thing yeah, in the Echo. Yeah, I hate that. I hate Fans I hate, have always hated it. I hate when West Ham had a shot. Yeah, I was going to say that, and everyone just went mad, I didn't thought, they? what's that about? And then they've yeah. also they've also got a Spurs shop in the, in yeah, what is that all about? That? I just can't. go to Harlow. Yeah, I know. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Why is that then? Do they sell anything? God I mean, but that West Ham shop didn't last long, did no, it? No, it didn't. And the no. Spurs one's got wags over it every yeah. every Saturday oh, morning. It's just ridiculous. But no, the West Ham thing has always been a bugbear. And I think the thing with the Echo is, mm. I think back in the day, long before I was there in the in the seventies or whatever, I think they actually did cover West Ham properly because right. yeah. when when newspapers sold a lot of papers and, and the Echo suppose, yeah. was selling like seventy thousand copies wow. a night or something silly. Yeah, yeah. And then, but because obviously, you know, factually, like it or not, a lot of people here are from the East End. Yeah, yeah, you know, true, they're, so their families yeah. who live there and stuff. And there's a lot of West Ham fans, as there are the other London clubs yeah. around here. But to me, the Echo is the South End United newspaper. Yeah, definitely, 100%. But there's always, the editors there have always wanted a bit on West Ham. Yeah, and, yeah. But, but it's always been like a half-hearted effort. Then someone might have done it for a little while because they wanted to get up the ladder and go yeah, somewhere yeah. else, get a few cuttings in their, mm. in their scrapbook for their CV. But it's always been press association copy, like, yeah, knocked right. up. Never, not in my, no, not something I've ever wanted no, to get involved no, with. No, sorry, I feel bad now saying that. I do, I, like, do I feel like I've let something out? I feel like yeah, I've yeah. released it. No, I feel like you feel better now. A lot I of do. your anxieties have, you know, you've probably been a better person because of this podcast, mate, I suppose. I was there the night Brett Angel scored his goal against West Ham when we beat him 1 0. Happy days. I, I was, was in the North Bank behind the goal, mate. Fucking North Bank, where's it gone? Oh, mate. Well, that's just killed Roots, so, wasn't it? It has, yeah. And also getting rid of the big South Terrace, but I never saw that. That was before me. Yeah, that was there when I first went. Amazing photos mate, of that. We, mate. Could get, we could get 10,000 in there. It's unreal. I remember as a kid, we started going in the West End. It was two quid to get in, yeah. in the West End. <laughs> and we used to go and meet there, and you could walk from one end of the stand to the other because it was Terrace in the West End. Yeah, yeah. So you could watch the, the goal you were shooting at. Right, yeah. Because yeah. let's be honest, you if you couldn't do that, for one half, you'd just be looking at the opposition keeper doing his warm ups because he yeah. ain't saving no shots. <laughs> But it was great because you could you had this massive, huge fuck off terrace, yeah. and you'd have you'd be just like playing standing. Preston yeah, or yeah. Berry like on a Friday night because it was always yeah, Friday yeah. night games in, and there'd be like about a hundred of them, two hundred yeah. of them maybe, and like in that terrace it looked like about looked five, stupid. <laughs> and they'd come over to this little wire fence, and everyone had just began like, oh, all right, you northern bastard. <laughs> All right, you know the monkey and all this like sort of thing, just like taking the piss. And then they'd just come over like from this whole terrace and stand at the fence and just like snarl at you and stuff. And as a kid, that was great. Yeah, that's quite great. scary. But you had this magical wire fence between yeah, that you. Yeah, no one could get through. Yeah, but you, you know this massive, massive stadium like terrace, and then yeah. they'd, they'd just stand in this little bit next to like the South End fence, so you could swap insults all night. Yeah, yeah, no, lovely, yeah, lovely. Yeah, lovely. Part just of growing nice, up, just a nice occasion. Part of growing up. Yeah, the hundred percent. But yeah, the North the Friday nights. I miss that. We used to have that a lot. I mean, I don't know why we stopped doing that I mean we it was clearly our decision or to apply maybe the, the FA doesn't allow it what Friday night football yeah yeah Friday yeah because when football. I was a kid it was always Friday night football and when we went up the two seasons under yeah. Webby to the, like the old second division for the first time mm. and the, the season we went up it was 80, 89, 90 or 90 or something like that, I can't remember mm. but um, it was so rare yeah. to play on a Saturday and you know what it's like as a fan I don't know what you're like but I used to always be so superstitious yeah right I looked like I had like you know like a sort of like a mute Tourette's and like OCD all thrown in like the things I'd be doing like tapping my shoulders and, and like rubbing my knee or like making sure my shoelaces were done up properly and stuff like that you know and uh, or one hand in one pocket and one around my no we'll leave that one there, right? but, um, but um and I remember, okay, I always remember playing Fulham at home on a Saturday and they had this little Welsh geezer up front with a Freddie Mercury moustache. I can't remember his name. It was Summit Davis. It might have been Gordon Davis. Right. And he always used to score against us. And I always remember him running through one on one. And when you were behind that North Bank, behind the goal, you could like see it all coming towards you. And he was one on one with Paul Sansom. And everyone yeah. went, oh, it's Sammy. And he went out and just like saved Smothered his shot. It. Yeah, and yeah. we got a draw. And Fulham was such a bogey team. But like it was, it, it that was a Saturday, and it felt so weird to watch a South so End game in the daylight. Yeah, yeah it right. was weird, and you, you got so superstitious. But I think the reason being, I'm sure it had something to do with the football pools. Right. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Which but is who does some that ancient now? thing. Yeah. yeah you yeah, probably don't know about. Yeah. Who does that now? Well, you had to stick a cross on a bit of paper with some like bloke looking at nothing, like <laughs> cranking his neck or jumping or something. Yeah. <laughs> But um, but yeah, so that all stopped, and then I, it must have something. It's got to have something to, to, to do with um, with with money. It has yeah, to be. It has I don't to understand. Be. So I used to get better crowds because, and we used to win more. Yeah, we used to win more. It was a better atmosphere, 
because there's nothing like watching football on the floodlights, is there? Right? I mean, and you'd get more fans because you would get some of the float in West Ham, Arsenal, that, could, that Tottenham going on that would Saturday, go on a Friday. Yeah. And because they didn't have a girlfriend, they'd go yeah. to one on the yeah, Saturday because as well. they didn't have a life. They'd and then go. try and spot it on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, and then post on Trip's home on, a, on the Monday. Yeah, well, that didn't and, exist yet. Oh, you didn't say that, did you? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, well, they're not when they're not like looking at their stamp collection. But um, but yeah, but, but so you know, it, it was it was good. It was it, it was great. Yeah, we yeah we missed that. I think um, it'd be nice to have at least one. Yeah. What happened? What I mean, obviously, when it all had to go all seater, yeah, and then they obviously built the flats on the south stand, and mm. then they decided to put that little uh, two tiered, the two stairs tiered stand in there just now, which was a good job. Yeah, but obviously for years they just had about four steps there that picked the away fans had to stand on. <laughs> um, what what happened with? Uh, and obviously, sorry, obviously, then the away fans went into the north bank, yeah. which is the worst thing ever because it was like the it was the orchestra the at south end, what and it was like decision. you know the, the acoustics in that roof when yeah, people yeah. were singing. That's where everybody went, so it absolutely ripped the soul out of the ground. But what happened to a few years ago when they let fans start going in there for some games? Yeah. Why has that stopped? It's like, well, there, there was some uh, somebody kicked off. Can't remember who it was. Um, I can, but I can't remember their name. Otherwise, I'd say it. I'd, I'd expose them. But I think uh, that somebody kicked off. And there was a bit of a ruck in there. And I, I think it was a Northern team, maybe not Stockport. I don't know. It was someone... Because they, like, they were still letting a few away fans yeah, in with, yeah. like a, with a, like a sort of a... they do it a, on a, a game. plastic strip between them, That's it, they? yeah. yeah. The, the solid strip that yeah. definitely nobody can get no, through. No, absolutely no one. You know, no. If you've no. got a nutter that wants to have a fight, they ain't getting through no. the fucking plastic sheeting. No. Let me, no. Let me just say that now, all right? Yeah. No, it's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> but then, so they... I think the idea was they'd try and choose a... A game where we'd be playing against somebody that was like far away that wouldn't bring many fans. Yeah, and stick yeah, in the corner, yeah. Which is yeah, they're not going to do it at home at Gillingham or something. No, like yeah, well, they should give it a go. Yeah, I yeah. Think yeah. mix I, it up. Do you know what I? I always think just put them in the south lower. Yeah, the away. And but they, but I like think the, there's always been that argument, but there's been a thing that it's not logistically good for ferrying the fans around the grounds. Just walking through the middle of the pitch. I don't, I don't know about that sort no, of thing, I, but, I but uh, it's, it, 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 you know, it's never been. It's never been the same. No, it hasn't. It hasn't. Well, I don't. I don't. Yeah, um, it hasn't been the same. I didn't even go then. It's clear to see. Do you know what I mean? In that little corner in the west stand. I mean, yeah. it's not not ideal to make it make noise. You feel quite detached from it because the whole left hand side's empty. Yeah. It's all right when you play Luton or someone that bring loads of knobheads. Well, I took, I took the first game I took my kid to was. Mm. Um, Millwall at home. Yeah, but, oh, nice. So that's nice, a nice choice. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> About three years ago, he was only three, but my cousin was over from Australia and he'd immigrated. It was the first time he'd come back and he had three kids like aged about seven to about 11 and they would, they'd never been here before right. and they were desperate to see an English football match. Mm. So it just happened that January the 2nd or whatever it was, we were under Millwall. Right. So we went with me, uh, me like 70 year old auntie who's like the most frailest, <laughs> meekest person you'll ever meet and I took me, me little and he was only three and it was the same old thing, got to the ticket office, oh yeah, no, oh, no, we haven't got any tickets, oh, you, but you can't all sit together, oh, n- n- you know, like a, a nightmare, <laughs> like yeah. getting anything, still nothing like, you know, running like clockwork and then in the end, they said, oh, we can stick you all in the Trivial Pursuit cheese in the corner of the ground between the west and the north, you know, the little <laughs> oh, cheese nice. in the corner, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we had to walk all the way around to the west stand, got in there and that, North Bank was just full of Millwall. Yeah, it? it was so just rammed. And the, and the thing is, and then you, and then the other side of you, you've got like the South End like lads that want to have a sing song yeah, and have yeah. a, give the away fans a bit of a stick. So we're yeah. in the middle of that. Me, me, can't he? <laughs> all the little kids, me little and these Thomas the Tank Engine coat, <laughs> chewing his cheddars. All these big like middle aged to like sixty grizzly looking like that, people from south of the river, like this. getting their asses out. They're like you know all look like desperate Dan. Yeah, doing the old throat <laughs> cut. And then I've walked in in this big red jacket with all my long hair and, and that, like hanging down, and they've all started singing to me, there's only one Carapable scheme. <laughs> and to be fair, I like give them a little salute and I've got to clap back to thought that was fair play. But um, so I thought, credit where it's credit shoot, then the South End fans next to us have started singing, the wheels on your house go round and round, round and round, round and round. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh God. And I'm looking at these Millwall fans, and like I say, they're all like, the proverbial brick shit houses like look like they work in like scrap yards around the old den, do you know what I mean? And like bury people that never ever get seen again. And then you've got like the South End fans that are giving it to them, looking at them thinking, Yeah, if this kicks off, you're all about twenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've it's all not got like go Mickey well. Pierce moustaches and yeah. like you know, it's like Yeah, you've got a nice you, Fred you, Perry coat on that. We're, we're, we're gonna be the ones getting you know, <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you know But luckily they won four 0 that day Millwall, so uh, it, was all good. it was all good. They didn't yeah. ever stand apart. No. I went there a few years ago where Adam Barrett scored, we won three 0 They weren't happy. Let me tell you, they well, were not the, happy. At the den? Yeah, yeah, they were not happy people. Yeah, but you never went to the old den, though, did you? No, no. That, mate, is, was the I, stuff I, of nightmares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went there a few times, and you've never seen anything no, like it. just full of madness. It's just surrounded by junkyards, yeah. scrapyards, 
I think in the the, the, the book the, the football grounds of Great Britain by Simon English, he describes it as being like something out of a Jack the Ripper story. Right. You know, but, yeah, it, right. but it's like that. You go from these two dark Victorian like one way tunnels to get to it. Yeah. And then around the ground, just you had fences around it and rotating spikes on mm, everything. Mate, that is insane. Mate, it yeah. was like that is, intimidating. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah, fuck me. But the new the new one isn't that much better. No, but it's, it's, it's a lot, lot better than that. Yeah, yeah. It's still not good, but it's a lot better uh, what, than that. What I like, you come out of South Bermondsey, or whatever it is, South Bermondsey, isn't it? Or Bermondsey. And the, the there's like a big metal gate that sort of turns over like that, so you can't get out if yeah. you have to. It's yeah. like, keep you in oh, there. Oh, mate. Yeah. I mean, that place there, like the old den, it was one of those places, like, if, if they wanted to get you, yeah, you they, that'd be it. Coming. And, and no, there was nowhere to run. No. It, it, was just, it was just surrounded by scrapyards and... Metal dealers and like, you know, it was just the most gruesome place ever. <laughs> Unbelievable. Mate, man. weird, weird place. So, throughout your time as a journalist, mm-hmm. or a sports pr- reporter, yep. you covered South United. Yeah. Um, you must, you know, what... Loads of you must have seen loads of things that people didn't see or heard about the different things. Yeah, what's the maddest thing that's happened to you as a sports writer? Where do you want to start? Um, anywhere, I think. Well, there's quite a few funny stories. I mean, uh, I think you obviously, I used to always try and be really honest, and when I covered the club, mm. they were really bad, like scraping about in the you mm. know, the bottom division, just. Fighting the state, Alvin you and Alan Little was there. Alan Alvin Martin, yeah. yeah. I think that might have been my first season, 1970, 1998. Yeah, well, so, I think when I started covering it for the Echo, Alvin had just taken over, yeah. and then it was Alan Little, and then obviously Webby came back, mm. who was a he, he could be fun to work with. That's another good story. And then uh, I think, yeah, I think I got through to Steve Wigner in the end, and then right. uh, then I decided to move on to Pastures New. Yeah, but yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a story about Webby first. When Webby came back, obviously everyone was so excited because mm. obviously he's like the Messiah. He took us up to the second tier for the first time, and, and I was excited because yeah. when I watched Southend as a kid from like the late eighties, obviously you know when I was watching the McDonalds and the Crowns and the Butlers yeah. and, and and the Chrissy Powers and people like that, and and for when Webby came back, it was like. Wow, you know, this is amazing. He was, he was like, back. yeah, the best manager we've ever had. Mm. And when, you, when you're when you a fan, when you become the reporter of the paper, obviously you love the club and all that mm. sort of thing, but you've got to sort of change a bit. You've got to become a bit more impartial. You've got to criticise You can't write well. like a fan. You've no. got to be honest. And I used to always try and be honest. Yeah. And as I say, it was a hard time. And, and the other thing is, behind the scenes, you see like the stardust yeah, yeah. quickly dissolves. Yeah, and you, you see there's people really that like, don't care. Yeah, yeah. And they're not that bothered. And mm. they are feigning it and stuff. And this is like sometimes when you write things or give marks... You know that some of these people mm. don't give a shit. Yeah. And then you've got the people right, re- re- you know, the fans reading your stuff like, oh, you've been giving him a hard time and all that. But you sort of, you get an insight into yeah. what's going on, you mm. know. But I remember, yeah, Webby was coming back. And I can remember I was coming back from a game. I can't remember where it was. And I caught the train that day. And, and I'd heard that he'd resigned from his position as the Oval Town Manager. Mm. So it was obvious he was coming He's back. Coming. Yeah. yeah. So, and obviously Ron Martin was trying to, you know, play a blinder because he knew that Webby had such a, a hold, yeah. hold down here. So I remember... Went to the press conference, spoke to Webby, and Webby was like, uh, "Right, um, we had our first away game was at Blackpool." Yeah. He said, "Right, when we when we," um, he said, "Give me a call on Monday after the Blackpool game, which is on a Sunday, which you know, again, the power of Webby. I think we took two thousand at Blackpool on a, on, a, on a Sunday, which is like yeah. absolutely amazing. Yeah. That's <laughs> what, uh, you know, the bloke what could walk across, got, walk yeah. on water. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, so I was like, "Yeah, no worries, Dave. Cheers." He said, "Yeah, I've got a couple of players I want to tell you about. I'm playing the reserves, trying to get a few new players in." Anyway, in between this time, I'd done my. Uh, due diligence if you like and I'd rung mm. up a few reporters at other clubs that had dealt with him they'd all been like he will try and he will try and test you yeah. and he's he ain't the nicest <laughs> right. and you've got to like be ready for it and sort of so I'd done my own work so I rang him up that uh, that Monday after we got the draw at, I spoke to him after the game at Blackpool got a 2-2 draw rang him on the Monday hello Dave Bernie uh, you know, friend here from the Echo you said to give you a buzz today fuck off you cunt no way and then put the phone down no yeah <laughs> It's my day off. Fuck off, you cunt. It's my day off, and put the phone down on me. Oh my god. Yeah. So and I'm like. So that's. I'm like, and that was quite. And I'm like, oh, hmm. Uh, bit gutted uh, about uh, that. Uh, okay, Dave. Yeah. You know, so this like hero yeah. and all that, you yeah. know. And, oh, cheers. Yeah, yeah, and just being, but it was it was really weird to be spoken to like that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, but I'd done my, as I say, I'd done my research, so I knew what he was doing. And then to be fair, after that, he was good as gold. Yeah, he yeah was, fair. I think he wanted to see if he could test me, if he could have me in his pocket. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. You know, I mean, there might be loads of fans watching this that think that Webby was right to call you a cunt. To be fair, they probably. Probably was, yeah, probably was. You know, don't, don't make him a bad judge. But then, you know, like I say, loads of fallouts. I think yeah. two of the funniest ones with sort of, if you like, high-profile people, I always remember 
we signed Graham Jones yeah. uh, from St. Johnson, I think, and we'd paid 10 grand for him, like for a striker that obviously had a half decent record mm. earlier in his career. And we hadn't spent any money on anyone for ages. And uh, so he came with a lot of expectation. And he hadn't scored. What year was that? Oh, God, this would have been like the early noughties when Rob, right. when Rob yeah, Newman yeah. and David Crown yeah, were in charge. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he came in and he, had, he didn't score in a lot about his first 12 games. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, you know, people are rumbling. I remember we played Kidderminster at home on a Tuesday night and we got done 2 0, I think. Yeah, Mulby was their manager. Right. And we were woeful. And he was struggling. Mm. And even though I always tried to be honest, if you criticise, you've got to be constructive. You yeah. can't just like say someone so, was crap. Someone you know, off, yeah. No, you can't do that, and that's yeah. not fair. And and you hope you know it gives them a bit of a g up as well. Yeah. And I can remember clear as mud. Well, most of the time you'll probably analyse it right, so they will know you're right. Yeah. So, yeah well, g them up. I wrote this piece saying, look, you know, he'd, he'd struggled again. I said, Graham Jones, I think it's time to take him out the firing line. You know, mm. he needs to recharge his batteries. He's obviously not fit, mm. but he's got a pedigree as a striker. Let him get back to, to full power and then bring him back in. I'm sure we'll see the best of him. Yeah. And, you know, and that is exactly what I wrote. So anyway, the run up to the game, we're to Exeter on the following Saturday and Rob Newman, the manager, had told me in confidence that he weren't playing. He was dropping him. Right. Then I think Mark Rawl, Barrington Belgrave and uh, oh, Tess Bramble all got groin strains. <laughs> so I don't, know, I don't know what they were up to. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so he said, so I'm going to have to play him. And you just know, honestly, when you cover football, like... Eight nine times out of ten, you just can you can write the script. You know what's going to happen. You know what's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, football's poetic. In I used that to way. stand there with my notepad after a game in the tunnel at Roots Hall. I didn't need to write anything. I did, but yeah, I, yeah, I, because yeah. I knew what they were going to say. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, we played today, but we didn't take our chances. Yeah, yeah. We were the better team. We should, you know, the, 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 same, the old. same old lines. So anyway, I knew it was going to happen. So he's going to play anyway. Five minutes ago, gone. He shinned one in from two yards. Isn't he? <laughs> you know, Graham Jones. You know, Graham yeah. Jones is going to score. He shinned one in from two yards. He's run up in front of the North Bank. He's run up to the press box and he's given me a d- d- double finger salute. <laughs> Give me the double finger salute in front of the, in front of the press box at Roots Hall. Unreal. Then after the game, I've gone downstairs. I thought he ain't gonna speak to me, and he's speaking to the uh, the guy on the radio, and he's uh, he's going, yeah, yeah, it's great getting my first South End goal today. He said because it's been really hard for me since I come here because uh, the local reporter didn't mention my name. He said the local newspaper reporter has turned the whole of Roots Hall against me, <laughs> and it's really unfair. Because I've been injured. Ah, oh, fucking. Which that, is exactly what, you what said. I wrote. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Graham Jones t- giving you the, f- the f- double finger. But Happy do you know days. what? But then it's bizarre when you see like these people that have, that's the thing about South End. It's always weird how these sort of like big name people seem to revolve yeah. around every now and then. So yeah. obviously with him, he's gone on to be with Martinez, he's number two. He was, you know, in the World Cup semi final during the summer in Russia. And just to lead on to another story, we had another high profile guy that I had a really good falling out with uh, Stuart Robson <laughs> yeah, right. who obviously played top level for Arsenal West Ham mm. who absolutely you know loved his little self and uh, he was brought in out of nowhere by Ron one day right? and uh, Rob Newman and David Crown were having a tough time and I always felt a bit sorry for him obviously got on really well with them and it was great for me as a local reporter and they'd had no money to spend and they were desperate to get to the end of the season because a lot of all the players that were there that like were not pulling their weight and had hearts the size of peas yeah were due to be out of contract. Players that Webby had brought in, and so they could clear the decks and have another go, you know? Mm, mm-hmm. But they weren't their players, like, so they could have done something at the end of that season. Whether that would have gone right or not, who knows? But um, so, uh, yeah, so this guy, I got summoned to Roots Hall one day to Ron Martin's Porter Gabin Tower. And, uh, <laughs> and the Golden uh, Throne. Yeah, told, well, I've, I've brought somebody in, Bernie, to, um, to, help, uh, to help Robert and David with the coaching. And, I, and, I, and he, so I'd heard it was him. And I'd heard rumours he was about. Mm. He'd actually rung the Echo on uh, after Boxing Day to ask if the South End job was uh, likely to be coming up soon because he'd heard the manager was in trouble. <laughs> and I remember I'd gone to Cambridge on Boxing Day to cover a game, and apparently he was there in the crowd. So this no had obviously way. been on. These on are the, the cards, things that fans yeah, don't yeah. know about. So well, this, yeah, yeah. this had been on the cards, but for him to ring up the local paper, oh my really, God, when someone's weird. in a job, exactly. So, so. He's, when, he, when he introduced me to Stuart Robson, I was like, all oh, right, there you go. That makes sense. And yeah. I think this was about March time, something like that. Mm. So obviously Crowney and Rob at the um, because this guy, had been, they knew this guy was there for their jobs. Mm. So all they let him do for the first week was pick up cones. They'd been getting involved <laughs> in training at all. He was just picking just up cones picking up and bibs. That's all Love he was it. doing, yeah. Love it. But they got the bullet after, mm. after a, a couple of weeks later. And then surprise, surprise, he took over. And all he wanted to talk about was penetration. <laughs> he was obsessed with talking about penetration. Everything right. was about penetration. I like a bit of penetration. I love it. I, yeah. I love penetration. In the right way. It's great. In the right way. Yeah. So anyway. All the wrong way. Well, yeah, all the wrong way, yeah. I'm worried about you. Anyway, um, I'm not really. I like you. <laughs> but um, 
I remember I was coming. Yeah, so we'd played Boston on mm. uh, Easter over the Easter holidays away. Got beat again, and uh, Steve Wigner was managing now. Fucking with, hell. Yeah. Who obviously? But do you know what? He was. He, he's he's absolutely crucified by Southampton fans because mm. obviously because of his Colchester connections as well. Mm. But he was such a lovely guy, good bloke. And I don't think what the Southampton fans don't realise is one. He had Stuart Robson putting the knife in behind him the whole time he was there. Mm. I mean, he made some bad signings like Carl Emerson and people like that. But right. then he signed Mark Gower and people like that as well. Well, that's it. And that, that sort of built our, yeah. the start of our So he did, he did bring in some good players in Constantine on a free transfer. Mm. You know, weren't the greatest, oh, but he had a good goal-scoring him. season. Yeah. So he did bring in some like decent players on a very limited budget. But mm. one, he had Stuart Robson, you know, mm. in the background. Other thing people don't know is his wife was really ill at the time as well, like seriously, oh, really? seriously ill. Yeah, so there was a lot. Yeah, people like the fans things. don't take that into no. account. Yeah. So we got beat at Boston, and he had Stuart Robson as his number two, which he didn't want. He mm. wasn't allowed to bring his own bloke in. He wanted right. to bring in this guy Ian McDonald that he trusted and knew, and Ron wouldn't let him bring him in. Right. And uh, I got back from Boston. We, we got beat. Weird place, Boston. Been there. I've been there. Oh, yeah. strange place. Got there. As you do a little bit earlier, it like takes forever to get there as well. It's oh, like all these flat it's, roads. It's like driving across Holland, isn't it? It's it takes like up flat. four and a half hours yeah. to get there. Something weird. Got there. I think like you, you, you hear that they used to bring the cows into the ground to like <laughs> to for auction. And you, it, it's like that, isn't it? It's something really oldie worldy. Yeah, it's like Emmerdale. I got there. Tears. I got there, Mr. Wilkes. I got there about two hours before. That was sorry, age again. Emmerdale. Yeah. used to be like no, it wasn't sexy. It was all like old no, like yeah. lamb chop sideburns. Well, which is nice. Yeah. But um, some people might sheep find that sexy. Sheep dip and lamb chop sideburns. But anyway, and, and rubber wellies. But um. There was this woman, I got there an hour and a half early, as you do, and there was this woman sat up in the stands, like it's like she'd been left there from the first game. And she, <laughs> and she had like all brown teeth, crooked teeth, like hanging out, like goofy. She had like her hair in bunches, she's about 70, yeah. and like a little short skirt on, and big long stripy leggings on, like the witch at the Wizard of Oz. And oh, she was you were just buzzing there, were you? Mate, it was like the League of Gentlemen, do you know what I mean? It was like so <laughs> odd, are you local, you know? I was waiting for her to, to suckle a pig. Piglet to her teat as we were covering the game. God. Anyway, I diverse. That sounds like monkey. Yeah, it does a bit like monkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah pigsy. Yeah, he had a cloud as well. <laughs> anyway, so I got I got back to uh, I got back to um, Leon C where mm. I live after the game, and I got a phone call from Mark Beard. Right. And I was like, all right, Beardo. He said, yeah. He said, I just thought I'd let you know. He said uh, the gaffer Wignall never went back on the coach of us. He said, and uh, as soon as we got on the coach, Stuart Robson has started asking people. Um, what they what they what they think of uh, the new manager and, and the way he's playing Shut. and stuff like that. And he said, and I can't believe he said that Fuck to me up. because I know one of his 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 mate his mate is like my dad. His mates with one of his mates, like right. sort of thing, you know. So I thought that's weird. And then then I played football on a Sunday morning, mm-hmm. and I was having um, something to eat at the Spread Eagle Pub in Rayleigh, who paid for our pitch. Mm-hmm. And then I got a phone call from Steve Wignall mm-hmm. saying, look, I can't do this anymore because um, I marked his card about what Beardo had told me. He said, I can't do this anymore. He said, what do you think I should do? And that's the weirdest thing when you have this job. You mm. get asked your advice. What? When you've been a fan on the terrace. I mean, I've had chairman ringing that's... me up saying, who do you think we, we should get as manager? Shut up. No, seriously. Yeah, people don't realise that. They I do. Can full well They've never that. agreed with me. No, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> but, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you do, it's really that's surreal. So when you've weird, been that kid it? sitting on the supporters coach going to the shop with people that are still going now as fans yeah, yeah. and you still talk to them and stuff, it's really weird. Mm. If you wanted to, I guess you could, can you, do you have sort of the power to sort of control the club to an extent? To no, like, you don't because to... it's their decision. Yeah, no. yeah. Why but, would but you want to do it? I always try to stay really impartial. Yeah, yeah. But you can offer advice, but then I'm not, I'm just a Reporter. Yeah, just I like football. Likes football. Yeah, exactly. Knows a bit. I'm not. Yeah. A, I'm not a. You know, I'm not. To be fair, you know, people always used to say to me, ex pros and that, who think the local reporters are numpty most of the time. That mm. I didn't sort of understand what I was going on about, which was nice. But um, yeah, you're not. You're, it's not your profession. No, I mean, no. I'm a writer. That's crazy that you'd get called up and asked. You know, you get, you reckon? get advice. Yeah, but yeah. I would never. You know, I wouldn't ask them. Expect them to be able to write a story, so no, I wouldn't yeah. tell them how to play football. Yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So. Uh, so anyway, so he said, what do you think I could do? I can't do this. I said, well, you've got to go up to Ron and you've got to say to him, look, you, you either get rid of Robson mm. uh, or I'm or, off. Or I'm off. Mm. Yeah, which he did. Mm. Anyway, on the Monday, I got a phone call to ask me if I was all right from someone at the club because uh, Stuart Robson had been going around the uh, commercial department telling everyone that Graham Jones had beaten me up at... Um, <laughs> At Boston, because he was playing for Boston at this time. <laughs> After like being yeah, South yeah. End, he got onto Boston, saying he'd Amazing. beaten me out. That's weird. So I was like, well, no, no. I didn't even see Graham Jones uh, the whole time I was there. And I don't think he even played that day. Mate, that's weird, isn't yeah. it? So, Robson so, was so a I was weird like, person. So I was like, do you know what I mean? So I have rang him up, and he didn't pick up his phone. He obviously mm. knew it was my number. Yeah. And I just went, and I just like, I just hammered him. Yeah. I, I was so, I said, oh... I said, pick up the phone, you fucking cunt. You know, what, I know what you've been saying, all this sort of thing. I went, you know, out of order. No, not out of order, but 
Do you know what I mean? I was, I had the right time. So yeah. How dare you? Well, you don't Who play, are you? Don't you? play your games with me, well, pal. Well, we're a fucking don't sociopath. Don't play your games with me, pal. Absolute anyway, nutcase. so a few days later, no, so then Ron rang me and tried to sort it all out and I could hear that Stuart was in the background, but he weren't speaking. And I said to Ron, I said, Ron, what he's done, let's get him to explain what he's done, telling uh, people at the club that I've been beaten up by Graham Jones. What's all that about? And, oh, yeah, I think there was just been a bit of you know, miscommunication. And I said, no, Ron. So I'm not happy. I said, as far as I'm concerned, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I said, it's out of order. We move on. We carry on. But, you know, as far, it's, it's, it's out of order. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's insane. And I thought that was the end of it. Mm. And then you just move on because that's football, right? So two days later, I got summoned into the editor's office at the Echo for a dressing down. I was like, oh, hello. Yeah. Um, we've had this letter in that you've, uh, you've, you've been abusive to, uh, to Stuart Robson at, at South End United. I said, what? And um, he said, yeah, yeah, that you've been using foul language. They showed me this letter saying, oh... Da, 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 da. I don't think I've heard from Stuart Robson about the foul and abusive language your South End United reporter has used against him, which I do not think is a good example being set by the local reporter. From, well, it's only on his uh, answer phone message, so um, on his phone, so no one else is hearing it. Blah, 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 blah. Unless you're showing everyone, which he probably is. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. And it was on Alan Court, uh, headed note paper. Right. Uh, I used to be his teacher at Alan Court, bloody, 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 blah, which is the private school in, in, uh, Shut in Fort Bay. Uh, P.S. Stuart doesn't know I've written this letter. No yeah. way. Yeah. What? Like, no, of course he doesn't. What did you think when you got... Did you think it was a wind-up? You must no, have. No, I thought... I didn't, I didn't because of the way that he'd that been. He'd been. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, like... So then I said to my editor, like, my editor was trying to hold me over the coals for it, and I said, look, no disrespect to you. I said, this is his te- I said you know nothing about football. Yeah. I said, if you want to talk to me about anything like council and politics, yeah, I'll listen to you all day, so I know mm. nothing about that. But football's my thing. And I said, you know, you need to understand that football is dog eat dog and it's people trying to get one up on each other. So when he said that stuff about me, That's I had to nip it in the bud and sort it out. Mm. And as far as I was concerned, it was finished and we moved on. Yeah. But, but obviously not for him. Not for him. And he weren't there much longer after no, that anyway. he's probably still thinking about it. Yeah. 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 Probably. But then, you know, even now, now I work for the Mirror. Mm. and um, Things like but, that still happen. No, but we've had times where... Like Wenger's getting slagged off at Arsenal when he was still there, yeah. Or, or so, and it's him. He's like been pulled. Out, he's come out the woodwork again, yeah. and all he does is negative stuff. He's just like slagging people off, and it's like, well, what have you done? You know, I hate that. Yeah, I just Pe- hate just being used just to slag people off. Ne- negative, negative journalism. I mean, it's got a place, I suppose. But yeah, when but it's like, like I say, that, it's, it's got like, to be constructive. Yeah, it's got to be not made up. Yeah. yeah. Game all the youth games. And I sort of stayed away from it a bit, only going a couple of times a season. But now my little one's showing mm. an interest. It's nice now yeah, mate. going back with him and watching it. Well, now you've got I mean? the reason that you originally went. It, yeah. It's like reignited, It's I like suppose. the circle of life. Yeah, do you know yeah what I mean? 100%. And now you've got to fucking ruin your son's life. Did you life. see that bit? Did you read that bit I wrote in the All at Sea fans in a few like, couple of issues ago? No. I wrote I, a big piece in that or something along those I lines. I haven't checked the All at, All at Sea fans in for a long time. It's pretty fucking stupid, really, because I love it. Yeah, 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 no, it's good. It's not. I enjoyed doing that. But that was all about the circle of life and going with my kid and all that yeah, sort right. of thing. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I hate my dad for what he's done to me. Yeah, because my dad's been going for well, 52 years now. Has he? Yeah, man. So it's, And all these, I think his mate that sits in front of me, he's been 55 years. Yeah. But that, I, was, that was the other thing. Whenever you get a letter through at the Echo. Yeah. Letters in those days. But yeah, I mean, letters, yeah. Now, then email started. Yeah. But it'd always be like, blah, 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 I don't believe what you've said about Martin Carruthers. <laughs> 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 Signed John Smythe, season ticket holder, Roots Hall, 50 years. They always like stuck out <laughs> yeah. the years ago, yeah. like it gave them more of a, yeah! yeah. <laughs> you know more I mean? of a right of yeah. something to say. Yeah. Oh, mate, that was fucking ridiculous. But I'm yeah, getting to that stage years. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you can write to yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, mate. Yeah, so there's a show coming up with old big old Roy, the big man. Yeah, at so, the, uh, yeah sorry, mate. Yeah, no, no, you can you can talk. Yeah, it's at fine. the uh, Palace Theatre yeah. on Monday, April 22nd, evening um, after the Burton game. Yeah, rookie, so that's going to be a Larry evening. No, it should be good, mate. I mean, um, it's going to be something different because it, it's part of something called uh, Mavericks on Tour. And it's, right. it's, a, it's, a, it's a film company called Deadpan mm. who are... <laughs> They're starting up a series of stuff. They're doing it all around the country, and they're going to go to all different clubs and do a night with their most famous maverick. Yeah. So you know, like at, at Millwall, you'd have Terry Erlock, or at, or at, you know, at, um, Southampton, you'd have Mark Dennis, and it's all the nutters and characters, you yeah. know, like Stan Bowles and people like that. But um, so Roy's Roy's the one for there. It's the first one they're doing, and obviously they've got Paul Hawksby coming down from Talk Sport, who's obviously yeah. a, a big cheese in the sporting airwaves, yeah. coming down to do it, and, I've, and it's going to be a real. Sort of as, as well as as well as just Roy sitting there talking about stuff. It's going to be a very interactive thing where people can get involved on social media or in, cool. and, and, and in the crowd, walking around the crowd, asking questions and stuff. So it's going to be a Wicked. real. You can almost you know touch him, touch him, which yeah, yeah, people might like to do. So no, it'll be great because we did it. You know, we did it 
we did it before. I think I mean it was six years ago. We did yeah, it I was there, there with John Motson. Yeah, John Motson when he came down to Roots Hall for the the Pie and Pie Night to launch yeah. uh, Roy's biography, which I uh, penned, Red yeah. Card Roy, which was an amazing story in itself. And, and I think you know the feedback we've had from the book over the last few years, which mm. recently was re released in paperback, has uh, has been amazing, mo- mostly positive. And for someone like John Motson, when he came down that night, he actually came and did that for us free of charge. We didn't pay him a penny. Bloody hell. The, the publishers, uh, I got his address, funnily enough, through someone I know who knows him that works at the Mirror. Mm. And I got the publishers to send him one of the, the pre-press books for, just for him to read at, not thinking not thinking any way he was yeah. ever going to read it. And he rang up the publishers about a week before we were going to print himself to say, love the book, I get sent like six football books, ten football books every month, and this is the best one I've read for years since... Uh, a, 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 oh, I can't remember the name now. It's an ex-Millwall player, but like from like the seventies or something, yeah, yeah. you know. Which is like really, you know, that's lovely. That's amazing. And, uh, from like probably the most iconic voice. In yeah, football, absolutely. If not person. And yeah. then he said, "I would love to come down." He said, "What What are you doing launch-wise for the book?" And we said, "Well, we're doing this pie and uh, pie and pint night at Roots Hall, you know, for the official launch." And he said, "I would love to come down in front of you for you." No way. And we was like, "Well, you know, and what's that going to cost?" He's like, "No, I'll do it for a charge." That's unreal. All I want, I think he lives in Hertfordshire or someone. He said, "All I want is someone to come and pick me up." So the publisher went and picked him up. And I can always remember him getting out of the car park at Roots Hall when we were setting up. I bet you thought, no. To walk down to the Shrimpers. Yeah, it's weird when you see people in the flesh as well, isn't it? And it's a bit like that for you today. A bit worse, you know. I didn't want to say, but yeah. (laughs) I've locked the front door so you can't leave. (laughs) I might not want to leave. Anyway, um, so... uh, People were like straight away. You know, it's like being at like a like a, being at a boot sale. Yeah. You know, the, the doors open and people are already diving in trying to get something. You know, before yeah. you set up. So John's got out and there's people. Oh, can I have your autograph? Can I have your autograph? Can I have your autograph? And then some guy goes to him. Oh, I know John. I was wondering if you could come to us and uh, do our after dinner speaking function. And he was like, well, You need to speak to this person and that person. Excuse me, I'm trying to get in for the the function I'm doing here. Yeah. I start at three grand a night. Oh my god! So for him to be there and do yeah, that for nothing, for nothing, just because he loved it. it I was mean, amazing. yeah, just. Because I, I was going to say it's lucky, but it's not because it's it, credibility to you know it's cred to the book. Yeah, but let's be honest. And also yeah. in this, in the in the, the modern day world, it's quite selfish, isn't it? Yeah. So for someone, people usually, especially in like you know this industry, don't do things for nothing. No. So for him to come down here just for a lift, that's unbelievable. And mate, I was made up. I mean, it was just like the icing on the cake. Yeah. You know? right. And it was great. It was so surreal seeing him standing mate, that's there. That's unbelievable. Talking yeah. about the book, the way he held the, the mic up there, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was like he was in full was commentary in, mode. Yeah, it was like he was in the box. Yeah. yeah. But he was so funny, and you know, really oh, he dry. was brilliant. Yeah. It was, it was one of the best things I've ever been to. Yeah. And he called me a genius. Yeah. Which, yeah. You know, well, no one's ever said that before. He was pissed then. Yeah, he was. Yeah, but. Um, and the fact that he like let all the fans take pictures with him and yeah. he was talking to everyone. And you know what people can be like? Mate, you know? people can, can be weird. Well, like Dave Webb. Yeah. Fuck off. It's my well, off I'll, I'll tell you another little quick one. Then I remember going to Grimsby when we got beat 4-1 and we'd just signed Lee Chapman on loan. Right. And, I was, and I, was, I think I was at Yellow Advertiser then when I started out. And uh, Lee Chapman, obviously a big name then. Leeds had won the league a few years before. Yeah. I think he was at, on loan at West Ham and he came to us and uh, we had Ronnie Whelan playing for us. He got cropped that day. And... Um, who was the manager? I'm trying to think who the manager was. I can't remember now off the top of my head. Peter Taylor. Bad, right. bad times. Anyway, after the game, obviously you want to try and get a word with Lee Chapman. So you've got all these kids coming up to him with their sticker albums, these Grimsby right. kids. Like, can you sign this, Lee? Can you sign this, Lee? All right, can you sign this for us, please, Lee? You know, like trying to get something. So I kept saying, like, hello, hello, Lee, I'm Bernie Friend. Uh, hello, Lee, I'm Bernie Friend. Uh, hello, Lee, I'm Bernie Friend. And every time I try to introduce myself, some little like kid like stuck a pen in a mini sticker album in his hand. And I was like, so I eventually got to him and I was like, and he was like, don't you journalists introduce yourself anymore. Now go away. And he just walked off and went to speak to me. Shut so, up. Yeah, that's what I mean. So people can be so Horrible. rude. So that, yeah. that's the only game he ever played for us. And he scored after about two minutes and we got hammered. No way. In front of the Finders Fish family stand. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> they don't name him like that no They more. don't, mate. They don't. They don't. Yeah, for John Watson to do that, that is unbelievable. And it, like the night in general was just a proper laugh. I think, I, I mean... I would enjoy that more now. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I, I, I like those stories more than more than I used to. And listening to podcasts like Magic Sponge, I don't know if you've heard that with Jimmy Bullard, which is just outrageous stories about in football. And it sort of breaks the barrier, breaks the illusion that football can give, which is um, something that loads of fans are fucking don't live in reality. That's no. for sure. No. They don't understand that it's people's jobs and people's lives and that they go down the pub and they have a laugh and they're just like... Footballers are people too. Yeah, and do you know what, Jimmy Bullard? So I've obviously, after Roy's big book did so well, mm. I've been desperate to do something else. But then I had a child which got in the way. So yeah. for the last sort of six King years, I've, yeah, I know. So the last six years, I've been bringing him up because uh, I've, I've spent a lot of time with him. And um, so 
Obviously, and when you write another book, like Roy's book was such a labour of love because I said to you before, he was my hero as a kid because mm. not because you know he was like always like uh, you know Lionel Messi or something because he wasn't far from it, but he was like a cartoon character in the flesh. <laughs> yeah. He looked like Basil Fawlty. He ran like he was doing a silly walk, and you know he just you knew that he'd had about twenty pints the night before. <laughs> he was pissed out of his head still, but he was still giving it all for the shirt, yeah. and he'd be going home with about four barmaids afterwards. <laughs> he was like the stuff of legend. You know when they say they don't make him anymore like that, they really don't. Yeah. But. He's another one that divides opinion, but if you speak to like David Crown and people like that, mm. they will always say, if it wasn't for him, I would never have scored the goals I scored because he battered and bullied the defences for him. And, yeah, yeah. And throughout his career, wherever he was, like when I wrote the book, he played the the, play, the people that played alongside him scored a lot of goals. Yeah, that's that's um, well, it's like players, I guess, like it's not really the same, but like Emil Heskey probably made Michael Owen a bit for yeah. like, at Liverpool. Yeah, and you know South End have had players like that. Wait, you know. Wayne Gray yeah, uh, for Freddie Eastwood yeah. Wayne Gray is still scored what, 10 different sort of players yeah but, but kind yeah. of done the work for the other player yeah, yeah. yeah. they're yeah. a totally different kind of player but you know somebody that probably doesn't get the recognition they deserve especially yeah. when you do the dirty work in football you yeah. just get treated and like he did the, and he did the dirty work yeah well and done yeah. in various levels yes yeah. but, but, but for me so for me when I got in contact with Roy mm. And I flew out and lived with him in Portugal for a week. I went and stayed with him in Portugal for a week. And like I'm sitting there in Portugal in his like place. Yeah. And he's coming in in the morning in just a pair of shorts, <laughs> like with his you know flip flops on and no top on, bringing me eggs and bacon in bed and a cup of coffee. And I'm it's so, it's so surreal. Weird, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then like we had this great little system worked out where we would speak about because we were like talking all day and I was recording it mm. and having a few beers. And there's a few times he got really emotional and cried. Wow. So I think it was like a bit of therapy for him as well because he talks about his mate. At Colchester that killed himself like after they'd been drinking a little bit before stuff about his dad and that you know and the, the whole father son relationship mm. lots of stuff come out and he, and he, he did cry about it you know mm. which was really and I think it really released a lot of stuff for him and then we'd have the other so thing that, that was, sorry that was when you were writing the book yeah yeah, yeah. when I was talking, interviewing him yeah, for the, yeah, when yeah. we were doing the interviews for the book before mm. I got back home and wrote it this mm. was just doing the interview stuff mm. so I sort of sketched all of his life out yeah. and, and he was crying at stuff wow. you know it was like a release for I him I bet you never expected that no but it said a lot about him because even though he's got this awful record of like 22 red cards he's yeah, actually yeah. like a really nice guy yeah. and then we'd go and walk his dogs because he loves dogs mm. so we'd do all that sort of stuff when his missus was there and then we'd go and walk the dogs every morning and then we'd talk about the sex. <laughs> so that was the system. That was the system. That was, was the system. system. Yeah, it was. But I was thinking, but at the end of the day, Roy, she's going to read it and she's going to know what's in it. She's going to know. know. And yeah. to, be fair, she, to be fair to her, I mean, obviously there's some quite like uh, tasty stories in that yeah. book in very graphic detail. But... Um, Everyone's had a life. Yeah, yeah. And it was all before he was with her. Well, so even fair play even to her. Even she existed, probably. Yeah, 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 so fair play to her. Yeah, yeah, do you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? But fair. some people can be funny about that. They so, can. So anyway, so that was such a labour of love and it went so well. It's so hard to write something else. Yeah. And like, so I have been distracted by uh, by bringing up my boy the last few years. But to Jimmy Bullock, yeah. as you just said about the podcast, I tried to get older Jimmy Bullock to do his. Because yeah. I was like, who is a character? I don't want to do it. If someone said to me, I will pay you 20 grand to uh, write Theo Walcott's biography. Yeah, you just think, no. Thanks. I'd be like, I know it's, but honestly, I wouldn't be interested no. because it's going to be so boring. Like, yeah, what's yeah. he going to say? Mm. What are they? Gonna, and that's the thing about Roy's book; it's so honest. Jimmy Bullard, I thought he'd be all right. He seems to be like the last character in the game. Yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. Yeah, you know, I not, mean, not to the same level, but still a good character. I, I think there probably is characters out there, but they're forced to put up this facade that's not real. You know, especially at the moment with like Ben Coker being injured, he just released the second um, documentary. Um, on, on BBC that they made about him just a five minute thing um, and he was just really honest like, in that he was but isn't like, that refreshing yeah that's what well, I'm bored of the, the sanitised bored yeah, yeah and, and sort of getting to know Cokes a little bit you sort of get an idea of uh, oh right yeah it's not like that I just made that up I mean, no that's what I said it's it, dog eat dog yeah of course and, and it's their job and they're and also they're lucky enough to do their passion most of the time for yeah. their job so they want to get to the highest level they've all got like you got to have like some kind of arrogance and belief to be a footballer, I suppose, yeah, to of course achieve like a certain amount or whatever you want to achieve in football. Um, and so it's good to see some honesty, you know, and that's what makes the Magic Sponge podcast so good because you get characters like Lee Endry coming in, who's a fucking lunatic, saying about getting his knob out in bars and driving down half pissed and getting pulled over. And all must that. be something about coming from the Midlands, yeah, like Roy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's, it's just yeah. I mean that yeah, Jimmy Bullard would be a, a really good book. He's but he's done it. He's done it, and but, and also he he's got he knows Barry Fryer yeah as well. So yeah. there will be some mental. Oh, stories he was at about Peterborough, that. wasn't he? Yeah, but he but, signed him. Yeah, yeah, of course he did. But I ran. I tried. I don't I don't know Jimmy, no, and, no. and this is to say a lot about him. It says something about him. I mm. think I didn't know him. Never mm. met him in my life. But I thought he'd be a good one. Mm. So I 
contacted, I think, MK Dons, where he was finishing right. his career, just left a message. Mm. He rang me at home that oh, night. Wow. He said, hello, mate. He said, oh, he said, you know people, don't you? I've been hearing all day you've been trying to get hold of me. <laughs> and he actually bothered to ring me. That's good. And I thought, like, I know it's only a phone call, but it's like, you've actually bothered to do that. These days, people don't do stuff People like wouldn't that. do that. And now, he was saying, yeah. I'm so sorry, but I've just signed a deal with uh, some guy from TalkSport to do it. And, oh, and, right, it's, and really? it's been done. Okay, but right. the fact he bothered to call you, mm. people aren't like that anymore. No, no. People pe- aren't like that. People, uh, I suppose, it's sort of probably like not only in football but people probably always think they're trying to get something out of the other person you know you're, yeah you want to write his book but you want to do it for the right reasons yeah. so a lot of the time I think they're just used to getting fucking approached by weird people that just want to make some money out of them and so, being worried about and obviously there's that thing about being stitched up as well yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah which I'm yeah he got stitched up didn't he like some housing scam or something he got like um, I think he got persuaded to invest money or something like that and so I'm um, yeah fucking me my back would be up a lot, of, pitfall, a lot of pitfalls to be wary of yeah, yeah big yeah. time yeah. Mm, yeah so yeah so obviously going back to a, yeah so the show on April the 22nd mm. it'll, be, it'll be great to see um, and who's that with Roy McDonough it'll be great to see the fans there and obviously he's going to be at the Burton game during the day cool. as well and, is it uh, Paul Hawksby you said is going to be Paul there? Paul Hawksby is yeah, going to yeah. be doing it with him as well, yeah. So, yeah. But Paul will only be there in the evening. But Roy is going to be around the club for the Burton game coming cool. to the match. So, mm, yeah. Nice. Yeah, people will see him about. Yeah. yeah. We'll I've do... just got to try and keep him sober till the evening. In his little shawls. Yeah. <laughs> with the bacon and eggs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that night with uh, John Motzer was ridiculously strange. But one thing I was going to say, he's, he probably, I mean, one, he did it because he loved the book. But two, there, he might have this emotional attachment to the club because there's that clip of him like in the with all the snow. Yeah, the sheepskin. So before the Liverpool game. Yeah, yeah. So maybe he's got like something in his heart for South and United. I'd well, like do you to know? Yeah, I'd like to think that. And do you know what? It's funny you say that because that is the first time he'd been back there since that day. No way. So wow. that was what 1979. So he never, never commentated never, on any cup was, game or anything. No, though. that's the only time he'd been back to Roots Hall since 1979. And obviously he, he um, announced his retirement not long after. Yeah, right. So maybe yeah. it was like a little bit of a farewell tour because yeah, he obviously yeah, right. The sheep, I think the sheepskin jacket, which is obviously his trademark, was, was born there at that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So with South and United have done something then. Yeah. Born fashion. Ah. Oh. Injected fashion into absolutely. a legend. Yeah, absolutely. Much yeah. like uh, me, us two. Yeah. We're well, you know, fashionable. Yeah. <laughs> Faces for radio. <laughs> well, or podcasting. It's yeah. been filmed now. Though. Oh, okay. Get the bag out. <laughs> so, here we go. We knocked the mic. Thanks for doing this, mate. No, mate, it's, it's been, been really good. Yeah, it's been, been great, mate. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. So, to end on a positive note, which we try and do, um, there's probably young writers watching this going, fuck me, I wish I was like Bernie Friend. And you'd, be, and you'd be right to think that. I doubt it very much. Well, thank you. What would the, what would your message be to somebody that wants to not even be a journalist, get involved in something that seems impossible? Well, from my own experiences, just don't ever be diverted from your path. Don't give up on your, without sounding, you know, don't give up on your dreams. Mm. And just like, get on the phone, send stuff into people, just get to know as many people as you can be a pain in the arse, get your foot in the door somewhere, and then once you get in there, be good enough and work hard and work you out the ladder. Sorted. But just don't give up. Yeah, don't give up. That's true. Just yeah. keep directing the way, you direct your life and the angle it's got to go. It didn't even make sense, that. Directing the ang- life no, at the angle you've no, got to go. It no, it didn't. No. It was like David Brent. Yeah, it was like David Brent, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers for doing it, mate. No, thank you, mate. I really enjoyed it. Thanks Should very much. Should we shake hands for the yeah. camera? 22 times? Yeah. One, yeah. Two, 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 two. Thank you very much. Sorted. <laughs>